Okay guys, the last video of 2023. So I want to get started by saying a massive, massive thank you to you guys and to everyone who has watched my videos in 2023. I had an absolutely amazing year and none of it would have been possible without you guys. So thank you very much. I mean, we started in January with a huge milestone of 100,000 subscribers. I think right now we're already over 150,000 subscribers. So the channel is growing really well. Thank you for that. Yeah, just loads of really cool things cool things happened this year like I started my salt water journey um, I traveled to a bunch of really cool places I upgraded my camera setup as well so lots of really cool things happened this year and like I said none of that would have been possible without your support without you guys watching the videos commenting smashing the like button and all that good stuff so again thank you very much yeah I made a lot I made a bunch of really cool setups this year as well and I mean there's loads more coming in 2024 one of the first videos will be the rescape of the Oasis Escape line, so stay tuned for that. And I thought it would be cool for this last video to do a bit of a compilation. So I checked the analytics and checked which videos got the most viewed views this year. And yeah, this is basically a top 10 of the most viewed build videos of 2023. So it's going to be a long one, so sit back, relax, grab yourself a drink and something to eat. Thanks for watching, happy holidays, and I'll see you guys in 2024. The majority of my build videos are all projects that I make for myself and my own aquarium room. But sometimes I do set up things for other people as well. My favorite one to this day is still the 1000 liter cube aquarium that was built into the wall. Today's video is another amazing customer project that I've been working on for a few months now. Almost three years ago, I made a nano aquarium for a client. This was a relatively simple build, but it was made with some of the best equipment and materials that were available at that time. The client was very happy with the end result, and he promised me that when he would be setting up a bigger tank, he would hire me again. We always kept in touch and quite often spoke about this future big tank. In May of this year that day finally arrived. My client had taken delivery of his brand new custom made 130cm aquarium and he hired me to scape it. Now he did have a few unusual requests but we'll get into that later. So first up the tank itself. It's a custom built 130 by 55 by 50 cm aquarium with a total volume of just under 400 liters or 100 gallons. For the lights we have something special as well. These are regular castle lights but they are covered by two lampshades to make them look more aesthetically pleasing and matching with the home interior. Time to get to work. The first task is something you don't see very often. One of the client's requests was to install a substrate heater. He had been using these in the past with excellent results, so this was going in again. I've never used these myself, so I did a little bit of research and this is what I found out. Substrate heaters are not primarily there to heat up an aquarium, Rather, the thermal is used to create a better circulation of water, enabling a better nutrient and oxygen transport. The roots of the aquarium plants are better supplied, and thus the growth of the plants is boosted. So we carefully laid out the heating cable and secured it in place with suction cups. Next up is the substrate. Nothing unusual about this, we're starting with a layer of Delona Deponit mix. This is a nutrient rich base layer that will provide the plant roots with everything they need. After smoothing out the base layer, we're going to cover it with gravel. Moving on to the hardscape. For this, we have two beautiful pieces of corbo root and these have been soaking for a couple weeks to make sure they are not going to float. Besides the corbo root we also added a good amount of black lava rocks, somehow I forgot to record that part. But anyway, that's the hardscape done. We then filled the tank with water, installed the filters and added the glass lily pipes. Now 
here comes the interesting part. This was all done in May of this year, but we would not continue and plant this tank until 3 months later. This was another request from my client. So basically we are filling the tank with water, starting the filters and that's it. And this is called a dark start. I've actually made a video about this topic in the past because there are many benefits. Basically a dark start means that you cycle a tank before you add in the plants. During this time beneficial bacteria will establish in the filter, tannins from the wood will have time to leach out, and when you use aquasol you can avoid all those water changes that are necessary in the beginning. The list of benefits just goes on and I suggest you try this once for yourself as well. Now normally you would do a dark start for a month or so, but we decided to do it for 3 months simply just because we were not in a rush and because we both had long holidays coming up. Right, so 3 months have passed and we are now ready to plant. I ordered close to 100 pots and we have a mix of one to grow tissue culture cups and regular pots. They arrived a day early so we just kept them in the tank and in buckets for the time being. The next step is to drain the tank and while we work we are keeping the filters up and running by placing the in and out flow in a bucket with water. So I'm starting in the foreground and here we're going to use a mixed carpet with dwarf hairgrass and Marsleya herzuta. After that I'm adding a little bit of color with Hygrophila araguaya followed by Ranunculus inundatus. That's the foreground pretty much done. Next up is time for some beautiful crypts. I'm adding some dark brown color with the crypt Wendetiae tropica, some green color with the crypt Willisiae, and some light brown color with the Albida brown. We are also adding in focal points here and there with a red lotus and a Madagascar lace plant. Moving on to the corba root, in the cracks and crevices I'm adding bulbitis and trident ferns, as well as a little bit of Hygrophila pinatifida. In the background I'm making small groups of colorful stem plants like Ludwigia palustris, Rotala orange juice and Meriophyllum red. Lastly I'm adding this massive Echinodorus behind the corba root, and if all goes well this one should start growing out of the water. That's the planting all done, so time to fill it back up again. Now you guys know that I would never end the video here, so a couple days ago I went back to see how the aquarium is doing right now. To give you guys an exact time frame, we did the hardscape on the 11th of May, then we planted the tank on the 8th of September and the final result was recorded on the 11th of October, five and a half weeks after planting. Now obviously we used a lot of plants from the very beginning, but I still think that the growth after just five weeks is pretty incredible. And I think the dark start and the substrate heating have definitely played a role in this. What do you guys think? Before we end the video just a quick look at the equipment, we have two external canister filters from JBL, a CO2 system that's controlled with a pH sensor and a temperature controller for the substrate and normal heaters.
Welcome back everybody. In today's video we're setting up a small little aquascape for one of my favorite nano fish. It's a beautiful hardscape selected, got some really nice plants. I'm excited about this one. Let's get started. So here's our empty canvas for today, ready to be scaped. Well, almost ready, we need a light and then we need a background. Let's start with the background first. And this is the stuff that I love to use for the background. This is this really cheap self-adhesive glass filter you can find in your local hardware store. And this roll is two meters, cost me seven euros, so pretty cheap. And they have loads of different varieties, but I always go for the basic one. Sometimes they also call it cloudy or milky. But yeah, I'm just gonna cut this to size, apply it to the background, and then we can continue. Background done, nice and easy. Sort of half transparent, I think it's called frosted actually. So it's just nice to add a background and it just helps to prevent us from seeing the wall behind the tank, you know? Like once the tank is up against the wall, just like here. I mean, it's not really nice to see this through the glass of the tank, you know? So the background just kind of helps to prevent that. Yeah, it's good. Let's move on to the, uh, the light. Yeah, now we're talking. So this is the Jihiros A2 series, and this is the 401, so the 40 centimeter version. And honestly, this Jihiros A2 series, I think is currently one of my favorite lights for like nano tanks because it's very powerful. And well, it's not the cheapest, but it's also not very expensive either. It's like somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's a pretty decently priced light, very powerful. I'm running the same light on this tank and the one above that. And well, as you can see, it's uh, growing plants just fine and it's currently only on 50% intensity. So yeah, pretty good light. It's not sponsored or anything, just a yeah, very nice product in my opinion. Just want to double check the size because I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, so it's 40 centimeters and then it's 30 by 30 as well. So that's like roughly 36 liters. I guess total volume is more or less 30 liters. Uh, let's check the inches as well. So that's 15 and a half by 11.7, 11.7. Okay, so let's get started with our substrate layer. Of course, as always, I'm using Aquasoil, but I'm actually trying out a different brand this time. I've managed to get a bag of the new Oasis Scaper Soil. Never tried this one before, but I heard some good stories about this. And they come in black and brown, so I got the brown variety. Would have preferred the black, but I think we're gonna use some cosmetic sand in the foreground, so the color doesn't really matter. Just starting with a thin layer of aquasol, just so we have like a little base to put our hardscape on. So I always like to play around with the hardscape before I start making the video, just so I'm a little bit better prepared and kind of know in which direction we're going. So I've selected some really nice piece of hardscape. Uh, let me show you the wood first. I'm going to be using this stuff. Uh, this is called Endwood. I've used this a few times now. I've also used it in the XXL vase behind me. And I really like this wood. It's very easy to work with because it doesn't release any tannins and it also doesn't grow any mold. So it doesn't really affect the water parameters in any way. Um, so I have three pieces. I've got two of these and these have already been used before. But this piece hasn't been used before. And as you can see, there's a little bit of a, a difference in color. It's not really a big deal. It might look a little bit odd in the first few weeks, but uh, once everything becomes waterlogged, then they will look exactly the same. And then these are the rocks. And this is called elderly rock or elderly stone. Uh, I've, used, I've also used this a few times now, really love it. There's loads of detail on it and it just kind of looks ancient, you know. I've also used this in the Pipa for Aquascape. It just looks really good, especially in combination with some cosmetic sand and some small gravel, you know. So I've got three pieces of that as well. So yeah, let's see if we can make a nice hardscape. This is what I had in mind for the wood placement, kind of a nice triangular style composition. 
We can have tall stamp lines in the, in the left corner. Have them going down as well. I think that's gonna look really good. Let's uh, see if we can add in the rocks as well. Yeah, I quite like that. I think it's quite a bold hardscape. Like normally you wouldn't put these big rocks like right in front, but I think it can work. For sure need to glue the hardscape together because these pieces of wood are gonna float. So let's do that first and then we can continue with the rest of the substrate. So in my opinion, the fastest, the easiest, and maybe the cheapest way to glue your hardscape together with these cotton pads and liquid super glue. So I just take these tiny pieces of cotton pad, I grab them with my tweezers, and then wedge them in between the points that I want to connect. Then saturate them with some cheap liquid super glue, wait a few seconds, that's it, super easy. Okay, hardscape is glued, little test. I'm basically shaking the entire tank in the cabinet, so I think that's good. So we can now fill in the rest of the substrate. I just want to do one more thing before that, and that is to add a few of these root caps. Um, I'm going to use quite a lot of plants in here, and the majority of the plants are like really heavy root feeders. So I want to make sure that we have enough nutrients in the substrate, and also so I don't have to like add in a lot of liquid fertilizer. So just a few of these root caps. I'm going to open them up and sprinkle them uh, on top of the, the, the thin layer of aquasol, cover it with more aquasol, and then the substrate is done. That is looking good, really like that. I'm thinking to actually bring the aquasol to the front and basically stop here and just have cosmetic sand in this little corner. I think that can look good. Let's give it a try. If it doesn't look good, we can always remove it. Yeah, really happy with that actually. Uh, I think that's the substrate done. The sand and the gravel, I will add it later because if we do that now and then we start planting, there's always going to be some um, tiny pieces of aquasol spilling on top of the sand. So it's better to do that last. Oh, let's do a little view from the top as well. That looks good. Okay, so I've already prepared everything. And of course, as always, we have a beautiful selection from dandelion plants. So they have a new one in the assortment, the Limnophila hyperidoides. I never used this plant before, but i um, really excited about it because it's going to, if it works, it's going to be really beautiful. I've also selected an Echinodorus, the Echinodorus cordifolius mini. So it's like a really small Echinodorus. I've also got the classic Ludwigia Plustris super red, probably the easiest red stem plant. And then we have some Pogastamon decanensis. Also haven't used this one in a while. So this is gonna go mostly in the, in the background. And then I have another tray. Um, what do we have over here? Oh, this one is also new. Um, new in assortment from Dandelion Plants. This is the Blixa Japonica as an in vitro. I have some Junkus Repens. And oh, this one is also new. <laughs> Lots of new plants. Uh, this is the Lomariopsis lineata. And I've actually tied it to a few pebbles just so we can kind of place it randomly wherever we want. And lastly, I have some um, Helanthium tenalum broadleaf. This is um, gonna be the foreground plant. I think that's it. Maybe I'll add some more later on, but let's first start with this. Okay, so the first plant going in is the Bogostman decanensis all the way in the left back corner. Really like this plant, quite a thick stem, and then these really spiky leaves, just looks really good. And I'm just using one pot of this plant. There's one pot and I had quite a long stem, so I cut the stems in half. So I'm planting both the top and the bottom portion. Then to the right of the Pogesmon, I'm using the Limnophila hyperidoides. So I never used this plant before, but I've seen pictures and it looks amazing. So really hope it will do well in here. And I've got two pots of this Limnophila, so I'm going to use quite a lot in here. It's really going to be a focal point. Next to the Limnophila, I'm going to plant the Ludwigia Super Red. Yeah, just a really easy red stem plant. Even grows red without CO2 in medium light, so highly recommend it. Okay, so then the Echinodorus. Uh, believe it or not, but this was one pot, and we actually have like, wait, one, two, three, four, five, Six, six of these individual plants, so <laughs> amazing portions. 
Um, I've never used this Echno Doors before, but I've seen some pictures and it should stay really short and really compact as well. So I'm thinking in this open area here and maybe some more, some over here. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a gamble, a bit of an you know, experiment. Let's see if it's gonna work. Okay, so I've got two of them bunched together. Let's see if that fits here. I love how that looks. It looks so good. And then three more bunched together. Let's see if that works. I've got one left. I don't know, I'll just put it here. I still have some open space here. Maybe this one will grow a little bit taller. Nice. Then the Blixa Japonica is going in front of the Pogestamon Decanensis. So the Pogestamon Decanensis will stay vibrant green. And the Blixa might turn a little bit orange reddish, especially with highlight and low nutrients. I'm also going to plant some Blixa on this side, next to the uh, Ludwig Super Red. So I just found a nice spot for the Lomariopsis, the, the, log, the rocks with that sort of freshwater seaweed looking like stuff. I think the common name is just Suswasser tank, something like that. Yeah, I never used it before. Really curious about it. I have one more, I think maybe somewhere here. Here we go, that's nice. So we have four of those, uh, four of those rocks with freshwater seaweed. Let's give everything a little spray. Some of the stems are starting to dry out already. So we still have quite a bit of open space in the foreground and I basically just have the um, helanthium left. So it's not really enough to cover everything. So I just found one pot of Marseille Herzuta. Still had this left over from a previous build. And I think it's actually quite nice if we mix those two together because the helanthium has like a straight leaf and the Marseille has a round leaf. So it's gonna be like a nice mixed carpet. And the last plant, the Juncus repens, I'm basically just gonna plant this like a little bit everywhere. It's quite a slow growing plant, so it's not really like gonna take over anything, but just a little bit here and there kind of adds the wild, wild touch to it. Here we go, that's looking pretty good. I think the only thing that's missing is a little bit of moss on the wood. So I just removed some, uh, some Ricardia from one of my other tanks. If you can focus, it would be nice. Yeah, here we go. So I think I'm just gonna add a little bit of this Ricardia to the wood here, I think that would look really good. And then we're basically done with the planting. And now for the final touches, I have some ADA La Plata sand, as well as some ADA Aqua Gravel. So we can use the gravel to kind of make a border along where the, the aqua soil is right now. And then that will hopefully stop the soil from rolling onto the sand. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really good. Okay, planting is done, really happy with that. Can't wait to see how this is going to look in a few weeks from now. Of course, you guys are gonna see it in a few minutes, but I still have to be a little bit more patient. Uh, one more thing that I want to add to this aquarium, I'm gonna use an external filter, so I wanna add some glass lily pipes. Yeah, that looks pretty good, but it's kind of blocking the view to the background. I'm not really happy with that. So I think I might try to add them on that side, but pointing forward. Yeah, so basically like this, pointing forward. I'll move the skimmer there as well. Not sure if it's gonna work because these suction cups don't really work very well on that glass foil, but let's just give it a try. I think that will look better. I'm gonna move the tank in position, fill up with water, and that's it. Okay, so fast forward, it's now been exactly one month since I set up this tank. It's looking pretty good. 
can't wait to show you guys. Um, I also just got back from holiday, so I was a little bit afraid it would be full of algae, but it's actually doing good. It's also already stocked. I've already added some fish and some shrimp, but there's one issue there. Um, the fish that I added are like super shy, so it looks like there's no fish in the tank. So back in my local fish shop, see if we can pick up something else just to add a little bit more movement to the tank. So see this little guy over here? That's a black tiger Dario. I currently already have four of them in the tank. Mine are a little bit bigger, but I don't see them at all. And I also already have a small group of these guys, the Celestial Pearl Daniel. Again, they're quite shy as well. So we need something else. So I was now looking at these fish over here. These are the Emerald Rosbora. Very similar to the Celestial Pearl Daniels, but maybe that could be something. Yeah, I think I'm gonna grab a small group of these guys, the uh, Emerald Rosboras. And then I was also looking at the shrimp. I'm actually doing another shrimp tank. And they always have a really nice shrimp collection in the shop. So just look at these red cherries. We got the beautiful crystal blacks. But I think I'm actually gonna grab the uh, crystal reds. I haven't had a crystal red shrimp tank in ages, so let's do that as well. So this is how the aquascape looks now, one month later, and I'm really happy with it. In the next few weeks I want to increase the light intensity and fertilizer to improve the color of the limnophila. The echinodorus has finally started growing as well, I just need to remove some of the old leaves because they are starting to turn brown. The only thing that hasn't really grown much yet is the Suswasa tang, but this is a slow growing plant, so I guess we have to be a bit more patient. So right now we have the new emerald rasboras, the celestial pildanios, loads of these super dark colored shrimp, and lastly the black tiger darios which are still hiding. Oh there's one baby guppy as well, no idea how he ended up in here but he can stay for now. But the reason I named this tank the Myanmar jungle is because all three of these fish are from Myanmar which is a country in Asia. So I think that's pretty cool, we almost got ourselves a little biotope here. Of course there will be updates on this tank in the future, for now this is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. So roughly a year ago I made an aquascape for my barber. The tank is still up and running, it's doing good, he's actually maintaining it himself. But today we're going to rescape it. So I went to visit my barber last week for the nice haircut. And when I was there, I was looking at the tank and it's not really looking that bad, but it can look a lot better, you know? So while I was talking to him, he actually told me that he's going on holiday for two weeks. So then I started thinking like, okay, this is actually a nice opportunity to do like a little surprise rescape. So after my appointment, I sent him a text message like, hey, do you want me to take care of your fish while you're gone? Of course, he was really happy that I offered that. So he gave me the keys to his barber shop, and he's now gone for two weeks. So yeah, good opportunity for like a little surprise rescape. So let's go over to the barber shop, let's pick up the tank, bring it back here and uh, rescape it. Here we are, let's take a close look. So I set this up one year ago and the idea was to just make something that would be super low maintenance because any maintenance would have, been, yeah, would have to be done by me. My barber had no experience with a uh, planted tank so couldn't really rely on him of course. But uh, actually, he's, for the past few months, he's been taking care of it himself. He uh, started to really enjoy it. He's doing his own water changes, trimming the plants and stuff like that. So really cool to see that. But yeah, it just can look, it can look a lot better. So let's drain this aquarium. So take it back to my place and then we can uh, get started.
Okay, back home again. So I want to do a complete rescape on this aquarium. So I'm thinking to just take everything out. So I'll start by catching the fish and the shrimp first. I'll place them in a, in a bucket with some of the plants. I think we can reuse most of the plants as well. We have some beautiful crypts in here, some beautiful boosts of Flandre, some really nice moss as well. So we can definitely reuse that. And then I'll probably also reuse a little bit of the substrate because the substrate is of course full of beneficial bacteria. And that way we don't really have to like start the cycle from, from scratch again. So yeah, I'll probably reuse some of the substrate but I don't think I will use the, the hardscape again. I'm gonna go for something completely different and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, tank is almost empty. I've managed to catch all the fish and the shrimp. I actually have a load of cherry shrimp in there and then a few ender guppies as well. I'm gonna put the fish and the shrimp in this bucket or they have the plants in there so then they can stay in there for a few days until the rescap is done or maybe a little bit longer if we have some uh, ammonia spike or something but um, yeah let's take out the substrate give the tank a good clean and then we can start all over okay it's so now the next day Tank is all clean, so we're all ready to get started. Let's kind of quickly go over the setup that we have going on here. The tank itself is a Denless Capers tank. This is the 35 liter version, which is measuring uh, 39 centimeters from left to right. And that is, um, let's say 15 and a half inches. Then front to back, we have 32 centimeters or 12 inches. And the height is, um, it's about 28 centimeters. And that is, almost 11 inches. So total volume is roughly 35 liters and I think that's around about nine gallons or so. Then the light is the Chihiro's WRGB2 Slim. It's quite a powerful light, but we're not gonna be running it on full power because we're not gonna be using CO2 in here. It's gonna be a very low tech, simple setup. I'm also gonna use an internal filter, the filter that was already used before. And I'm currently keeping the filter up and running in this aquarium next to it, just so we keep the beneficial bacteria alive. So a super simple setup, just a tank, a light and a small internal filter. We're not gonna be using CO2. We're not gonna be using a heater because we just have the cherry shrimp and the guppies. Although I am thinking that I might add some different fish, but I'm not entirely sure yet, but the barbershop is very nice and warm, so we don't need a heater. So let's get started. Let's first uh, add in the substrate. Here we go. So this first layer is just the old substrate that I removed from this tank yesterday. I didn't rinse it. It's just been sitting in a bucket for the past 24 hours or so. So still full of beneficial bacteria, still full of some nutrients as well. And we can now cap this with a fresh layer of aqua soil. And the first layer that I'm gonna be using is the Oasis Caper Soil. I still had this left over, but I think it's actually perfect for this little setup because from what I've experienced so far, this Oasis Caper Soil doesn't really contain a huge amount of nutrients and it also doesn't release ammonia. So this is gonna be a low-tech setup and we're not gonna be doing lots of water changes either. So I don't want a lot of nutrients in the substrate. So I think this is actually perfect. Okay, so the substrate is done, so we can now move on to the hardscape. I'm gonna keep the hardscape pretty simple, like I always do, and just add a load of plants. And I'm gonna go for a triangular style composition because with the way the aquarium is sitting in the barbershop, it's kind of tucked into a corner and you view it from the front as well as from this side. So it's nice to have a triangular style composition with this side a little bit more open. So I have uh, three pieces of serious stone and then I have just one piece of wood. So just a very simple hardscape. Here we go, really simple, but I think it looks nice. I like all the branches kind of pointing in the same direction. It just really helps with that uh, triangular style composition, you know, and the rocks all pointing towards the, uh, the front end here. So yeah, quite happy with that. Loads of room for, for plants still, so that's also good. Uh, next step is to glue the, this piece of wood to these rocks, just to make sure it's not gonna float up. 
And of course, as always, I'm going to do that with liquid type super glue and cotton pads. You guys have seen this a thousand times already. We don't need to repeat again. So let's just glue everything together. Okay, I think the hardscape is glued. We can do a little test. Yeah, it's not really moving anymore. So it's good enough. So we can now move on to planting. And plants for this project are sponsored by Dental Plants, so massive thank you to them. They're always hooking me up with beautiful, beautiful plants. And I've basically selected some of my favorites, and also keeping in mind that this is going to be a low-tech setup, so no CO2 and pretty much slow growing as well, preferably. So for the carpet, I'm going to go with Liliopsis and Marsalea, and these two together are just perfect. They will require basically no trimming and they will grow very slowly, so that's good. Of course, some crypts as well. We've got the beautiful crypt Lagroy. Really small crypt, really love this one. And this one's pretty cool as well. This is the, uh, the new Anubius Kitten Mini. So it's Anubius, but with this sort of serrated leaves. And then I did want some stem plants as well, but yeah, they had to be slow growing. So I'm going for the Ludwigia Super Red. And here I have the Merophyllum Guyana, but I'm gonna prepare all these plants and then we'll talk a little bit more about them as I'm planting them. Here we go, plants all prepared. So obviously we're going to start with the foreground first. For that I have the Liliopsis and the Marsleia. It's going to be a mixed carpet. I'm going to plant them over here as well as over there on the, on the side. This one is going to take a long time because we have a lot of individual plants. So cue the time lapse. Okay, I think this might have been the longest time I've ever spent on planting a carpet. I think it was almost an hour. Even my YouTube music playlist asked if I'm still watching. But yeah, I basically divided all the pots into like really tiny portions and really took my time to, uh, to plant densely. Because I want to have a full carpet quickly, you know, and we're not using CO2, so we need to plant densely from the beginning. So I've used two pots of Liliopsis and two pots of Marsalea, divided, up, divided them into really small portions. And I basically told myself like, you're not stopping until every single plant is inside the, uh, the carpet. So yeah, took a long time. Let's move on to the rest of the plants. So next up we have Starogyne Repens, or also known as s -repens. And this is like a perfect plant for transition to the mid ground. I don't know if I've ever used this one in a low tech environment or without CO2, but I think it's part of the easy category from the dental plant. So I think it will be just fine. I'm also gonna plant some in the back here. Next up, I'm going to plant the Crypt Legroy. So we currently have a very green carpet, a lot of green. This is going to provide a bit of a different color. At the moment, it's a little bit like yellowy. It's going to be more like orange brown after, uh, after a little while. Next up, we have the Anubias, the Kirin Mini. This one is already attached to a little piece of wood, so we can just place it wherever we like. I'm thinking somewhere over here, should be able to still see it. And then I have another one. I've removed the other one from the piece of wood and I'm just gonna wedge it in here. I think that's a nice spot for it. Now, of course, I also still had all the plants from the previous layout. So I've kind of cleaned them up a little bit as well. So we have some crypts, we have some Bussolandra, some Vallisneria, uh, this is Halantium, and then we have some really nice uh, moss as well. So I think, for example, here is a great spot for the crypt. Okay, time for the background plants. Now this corner over here needs to stay empty because that's where the internal filter is gonna go. But next to that, we still have a decent amount of space. So I'm first gonna go in with the Meriophyllum Guyana. And then next to the Meriophyllum, I'm gonna go in with the Ludwigia Super Red. Okay, and then to finish it all off, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of moss on the, uh, on the rocks. So here I have the moss that I took from the previous layout as well. This is the uh, Busse of Landra moss. It goes very slowly, so it's perfect for this layout. The only thing I have to do is to cut this little branch over here because we're going to have a little in this aquarium and it's just, uh, just a little bit too long. There we go, that should be enough. Okay, so we're all done. Really happy with that. I think it looks good. All easy plants should go well without CO2, fingers crossed. 
So I'm thinking right now to go have some lunch. After lunch, I'll bring the tank back to the barbershop, fill up with water, ins install the filter again. And yeah, then I, I basically have 10 days until my barber comes back from his holiday. So hopefully within 10 days, we'll have some decent growth, but you guys are gonna see that in a few minutes. So at the end of last year, I made a mini desk aquarium without a filter. It was a really fun project. The video got quite a lot of views as well. I think it's now one of the most viewed videos on my channel. So super cool. Unfortunately, the tank didn't really develop like I imagined it. It was also quite difficult to maintain. And because of that, I've kind of been neglecting it. So today we're going to rescape it, turn it into something that's a little bit easier to maintain. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. So this is the current situation of the cube. As you can see, it looks pretty bad. I think for the past two months, I haven't even used the light. I basically just placed it in the window and let it run on natural daylight. Plants are still growing well, but I mean, without maintenance, you're just gonna get algae. So we're gonna take it down, empty it out, and just start from scratch again. I might use a few plants here and there. I think for sure the asparagus fern, I just really love it. So we might use that again in the new layout if we can make it work. So yeah, let me just uh, clean this tank out and then we can start over. Here we go, tank is all clean, background added as well. So we're ready to get started. So it's a very small tank. I mean, it holds maybe 10 liters or like two US gallons. So it's way too small for fish, but we can definitely keep some shrimp in here, maybe some snails as well. So it's just gonna be like a simple plant tank for some beautiful, colorful shrimp. So I'm using a different light this time. This is the Chihiro C2 RGB. 
I'm quite a big fan of Chihiro's lights. I just like that they're app controlled, you know? You don't need these big analog timers or those expensive smart sockets. It just makes it a lot easier. I do feel like it's a little bit too big for the small tank, so maybe in the future I'll swap it out for something else, but for now, for the setup, it will work just fine. Okay, subset is in. I've gone for the Dental Plants Aqua Soil. Started using this a few weeks ago, and first impression seems very good. Plants are growing well, very little algae issues, so I'm happy with this stuff. I would like to have some decorative sand in the foreground, but let's first move on to the hardscape. Okay, I think I'm gonna keep the hardscape like this. It's really simple, it's just three rocks, but quite like how it looks and I wanna keep this layout simple as well and just stuff it with a lot of plants. I mean, it's gonna be a no filter setup and for a no filter setup, it's always good to just have a lot of plants and the hardscape is not as important. Now, because it's such a small tank, I didn't really order any plants, but I saved a few plants from the previous layout. So we have some uh, dwarf hair grass, some bush flandera, of course the asparagus fern. I still had a few pots left over from other layouts not sure if there's anything really worth using in here, but I mean, I have quite a lot of tanks, so I can also take some plants from the vase, for example. I'm going to take the vase down soon, so I'll probably take some of this uh, Mirifilum Guyana. This cube is getting quite overgrown as well, so maybe I'll steal some plants from here. And then, of course, we also still have the 90p, so I might take some plants from there as well. Okay, let's first start with the asparagus fern. I want to plant it in this back left corner, so I think I'm just going to fixate it to the, the light stand. Here we go, so it's kind of just fixated to the light. It doesn't look the best right now, but I think once the roots kind of the roots kind of find their way into the substrate, it should be able to stand on its own. Then over here in front of the roots, in this little corner here, I'm gonna plant the uh, Mirifilum Guyana. It's quite an easy, relatively fast growing stem plant as well, so it should be able to cover those roots. Over here in the center, I'm gonna plant Blixa japonica. This is not the easiest plant, but I've also planted it in my no filter vase. And over there it was doing quite well. So I'm gonna give it a try in here also. Then in the right corner, I'm planting Amania pedicalata golden. This is also quite a demanding plant. So it's gonna be a bit of an experiment. See if it works. And if it doesn't work, we can just replace it with something else. And then in the edges, I'm going to plant some dwarf hair grass. It's a very shaded area, but in the previous layout, they also didn't have any issues with that. So hopefully it's going to be the same in here. I've glued a few bush flandera to some small pieces of dragonstone. So we can just place them instead of having to plant them anywhere. So we're almost done with the planting. Next up, I'm gonna do something that I usually don't do. I'm gonna cover all of the aquasol with sand. I have the beautiful ADA Colorado sand. This is a very warm color, so it kind of matches the Dragonstone. Yeah, I think the soil granules, they, they're quite large. And in this small tank, they almost kind of throw off the, scale, the sense of scale, you know? So by covering everything with sand, hopefully it will look a little bit more natural. So the tank is all filled up and I've also added a small bunch of redwood floaters. Now to speed up the plant growth a bit, I think it will be cool to add a little DOI CO2 system. So let's make a very simple one that has been working very well for me. All we need is an empty bottle, some sugar, some yeast and some gelatin. I'm going to measure out roughly 250 grams of sugar and 250 grams of water. It doesn't have to be super precise. Then we're going to bring that to a boil. And in the meantime, I'll soak three gelatin leaves in some cold water. Once the sugar syrup has started boiling, I'll turn off the heat and stir in the soaked gelatin leaves. This needs to cool off a bit, so we can now prepare the bottle. First I'm making a small hole in the cap for the airline tubing. 
And to make sure the system is completely airtight, I'm adding a few drops of super glue as well as baking soda around the tubing. I've also kind of roughed up the cap a little bit with some sandpaper to make sure the glue sticks properly. Now that the sugar syrup has cooled off a bit, we can add it to the bottle. The bottle then goes in the fridge to set the gelatin, and this can take a few hours. The last step is to mix a little bit of yeast with some lukewarm water, and I also like to sprinkle in a little bit of sugar just to give the yeast some food. A few hours later, gelatin is firm and we can add in the yeast water. That's our CO2 system complete. The yeast will consume the sugar and produce CO2 for about 2 months or so. And if you want to know more about these simple CO2 systems, I'll leave a link to a more in-depth video in the description. Okay guys, a few weeks have passed since this tank was set up and it has developed quite nicely. I'm really, really happy with it. I've added a small group of uh, orange neocaridina shrimp and they're doing really good. They've been here for a few weeks now, already had babies, so yeah, there's like a nice little colony in here. Uh, besides the shrimp, there's also some uh, bladder snails in here. And if you look closely, you can see these really tiny bugs. I think they're freshwater copepods or something. It's like a nice little ecosystem, you know? So yeah, most of the plants are doing well, they've grown quite a bit already. The Meriophyllum guiana has already been trimmed once. Um, the only plants that are not doing that good is the Blixa and the Emania. I mean, they have grown a bit, just not as much as I would like. Um, I am still running CO2 in here, I'm just, I've just removed it for the final shots, you know. Um, but I've kind of, I'm thinking of removing the CO2 altogether. I feel like it's not really doing much for this small tank because we don't have a filter, so there's also no flow, so the CO2 is just going straight up to the surface. And it's just not really being dissolved properly, so it's actually not really increasing the CO2 levels by that much, you know. And I think the Amania and the Blix, I just want a little bit of a higher CO2 concentration. Now I am dosing a little bit of liquid fertilizer in here, but very, very little. I'm currently using the APT Complete, so it's a complete liquid fertilizer, has all the nutrients that the plants need. And I'm just dosing one pump, so it's just one pump every week. That's it. Super simple, you know. Oh yeah, one more thing actually. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I might change the light. I haven't done that. I'm still using the Chihiro C2 RGB, but I've now attached it to this like little base plate. I think they call it the Chihiro C2 base. It's sold separately, separately and I will leave a link in the video description. But I think this actually looks much better. Like before it was mounted on the, onto the glass, but now with this base plate, it's like a nice little setup. So that's it, cute little desk aquarium, super simple to make, like literally, literally anybody can make this. And it doesn't really cost a whole lot either, you know? So yeah, if you are thinking of setting up a little desk aquarium, either for your home office or maybe even want to take it to work, I would say go for it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Welcome back everybody. Today we're making a new layout in the Big Shallow. I'm thinking to go for a relatively simple river style layout. So lots of boulders, some driftwood, and just a few plants. Yeah, I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Let's get started. Yeah, so river style it is. I think there were a few occasions where I referred to the previous layout as a river style as well. I think that also kind of looked like a river, but it was very different to what we're gonna to make today. That layout was very dark, was very condensed and a little bit mysterious. This layout is gonna be very different. It's gonna be much more light. It's gonna be much more open and with a lot more room for the fish to swim. And speaking of fish, all the fish that were in the previous layout will go back in here as well. So they're currently staying in this uh, little pond that I made. So this is like, a, I think it's like a 40 liter tub, something like that. They've been in here for two days and they're absolutely fine. And hopefully by the end of this day or maybe tomorrow they will go back in the big shallow i'm sure some of you are thinking like how are you able to put the fish straight back in i mean you're starting from scratch doing a new setup don't you have to cycle it again well the reason i'm able to do that is because i've kept the external filter basically running the entire time yeah so inside the cabinet i have this massive stainless steel external canister filter and this one is full of beneficial bacteria and i took down the previous layout a few days ago so there hasn't been water in the aquarium for a few days but i kept the inflow and outflow 
in this little bucket over here. So basically this mustard filter is just filtering this tiny bucket, but that way we're able to keep the beneficial bacteria alive and we should be able to kind of instantly cycle this aquarium. So that's it, let's not waste any more time, let's get to work. Uh, first thing we have to do is the substrate. Wait, one more thing in case anybody's curious, the big shallow is measuring 120 centimeters from left to right, it's 30 centimeters tall and it's 50 centimeters front to back. So total volume is roughly 180 liters, but yeah, I mean with all the hardscape and stuff, that's usually a little bit less. And the light that I'm using is the Skylight Hyper Spot. This is the L, the largest version. So this is a light manufactured in Poland. I've been using this one for well over a year now and I absolutely love it. But yeah, let's get started with the substrate. Of course, we are going to use sand because it's a river style layout. But in the back, I want to kind of raise the substrate a little bit. So I'm going to go for a little bit of aquasol and some gravel as well. Okay, so I got some leftover Neosol. This is basically what I use all the time. It's probably my favorite brand and just contains a lot of nutrients. Normally I would just pour it directly in the tank like that, but because we're going to be using lots of sand and gravel, I basically don't want those things to start mixing with each other. So I'm going to fill up a few of these mesh bags with the Neosol. That way we can kind of keep things separate. And if we ever have to take down this tank again, we can just pull out these bags, remove the sand, and that way we can easily reuse those ingredients as well, you know? Here we go, just a few bags. I've only placed them in the back. I will also have some plants in the front, but in the front I just want to keep the, the sand layer as thin as possible. So there's not going to be any aquasol in there. We're only going to be using easy plants, so that's fine. And I mean, this is just the second time that I'm using this method. But um, if I have to believe MD, then the roots of the plants should be able to penetrate through these mesh bags. So that should be fine. So let's uh, cover this with some nice gravel, or not so nice gravel actually. Yeah, so basically the only substrate layer that I want to see is the sand. And I got quite a fancy sand, this is Rio Sand Tigris. This stuff is quite expensive. I mean, this is two kilos here, it's 12 euros. So if I would want to cover the entire bottom area just with the sand, I would need a lot more. It's gonna cost me a lot more as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a cheap gravel in the background mostly, also to cover the, the soil bags. And then we'll cover that with the sand. So basically we're gonna have three layers of substrate. Yeah, so I found this 10 kilo bag with really cheap gravel. I found this in my local garden center for like eight euros. So I'm gonna use this to cover the soil bags and then we'll cover this with the sand, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's see, this stuff looks pretty clean. Does it need to be washed? Yeah, it does say here, rinse with lukewarm water before use. I know, I'm not sure if it's really necessary. Let's do a little test. I've got a glass of water here. Let's put some gravel in there. Ah, that's fine. It's clean, it's good. Let's just pour it in. Okay, that's the substrate layer done for now. We're gonna add in the sand later. First, let's move on with the hardscape. Well, the hardscape for this layout is actually sponsored by Wio. They sent me a bunch of different hardscape materials about six months ago, I think, including the stuff that they used in the previous layout. It's really nice hardscape materials. So thank you, Wio, for providing the hardscape for this layout again. And let me show you guys what I got. So this stuff is called Neptune Driftwood. And it's really interesting. It's very light in color, also very light in weight. I can literally pick this up with one finger. So I'm very curious to see how this is going to look once it's saturated with water. So this is the main piece that I got. Got a few smaller pieces as well. Let's first move on to the rocks. So these are the rocks that I'm gonna be using. And I think they're called Solar Eclipse, something like that. They have some really interesting names for their hard scan materials. What's interesting about them is that they're literally cut in half. So they have a very flat side. So we can put that directly on a glass or slightly on a substrate. This is the biggest one I have and then I have a few smaller ones as well. So I already played around a little bit with the hardscape before I started the video. So let's see if we can make the same layout again, basically. Yes, yeah, so that's kind of how I had the rocks layered out before. So five of those solar eclipse boulders. Next up, I got a bunch of small uh, Neptune driftwood pieces. And I want to arrange them so it kind of looks like we have one big piece coming down into the tank. Yeah, so 
this is kind of what I had in mind. So it almost looks like every piece is part of that main big branch. It's not quite there yet. I need to play around with it a little bit more. But um, yeah, this is just my, uh, my idea so far. Yeah, I think this is going to be it. it. Took a little bit of time. I actually removed a few pieces as well because I think in this aquarium it's going to be like less is more. So I think I'm quite happy with how it looks right now. It's uh, it's simple, but I think it's going to look really nice. We're going to have some green plants in the corners. Yeah, some green plants in between the the rocks as well. I think it's going to look good. Next step is to glue the hardscape cap together because these pieces of wood are definitely going to float. Let me actually give you guys a view from the top as well. So the main piece. It's going along the side here and just leaning on the glass and then all these smaller branches are kind of just leaning against it so we can definitely glue everything together and of course as always we're going to glue everything together with cotton pads and super glue i think by now everybody has seen this method already so let's just get it over with i love this gluing method like it's so fast and easy and just works every time so i glued it here for example i glued it here i glued it there and now this whole structure is just completely stuck together like nothing is moving anymore nothing is going to float yeah super easy so i think right now we can actually finish the substrate so i'm going to add in the sand and then i have some decorative gravel as well i think adding in the sand is probably one of the most satisfying things about making a hardscape layout only if it's dry though i mean if it's wet it's not as satisfying but yeah, so just a thin layer in front. That looks so good already. It does look quite yellowish and reddish. That's I think because of the camera and also because of the, uh, the light. So the Skylight Hyperspot has two channels, like a cold white and a warm white. And I can play around with it a little bit. So I think we still need to add in some more sand, but I think first gonna add in the gravel. And for the gravel, I have this bag of a Wheel Gravel Elderly. This one wasn't sponsored by the way, I just bought it, but yeah, I never used it before. It's just small round pebbles. Um, I think this definitely needs to be washed. I'm not sure though. I mean, we haven't washed anything, so why should we wash this? I think I'm just gonna do a big water change after we're completely done with everything. This is how it looks after it's washed, by the way, so just Relatively dark colors, a few white ones, but uh, yeah, I think it will match nicely with everything. Nice, I'm really happy with that. I think it looks good. Looks natural as well, you know. It's quite interesting with the uh, yeah the yellow color that we kind of got going on. It's a bit uh, warmer than what I'm used to with most types of sand, but. I think it can definitely work. I'm just curious how it looks uh, when everything is wet. So I think now is a good time to just fill up the cram with water and uh, just do one big water change. So fill it up, drain it completely and after we can start planting. I was kind of expecting the aquarium to go very cloudy because we didn't wash the sand, we didn't wash the gravel, but it's actually not too bad. So I'm currently draining the tank again. In the meantime, we can talk about the plants. So the plants that are going in a substrate, I only have two types. And the first one is the Heterantra zosperifolia. It's a very easy plant. Uh, the other one is the Helanthium bolivianum quadrocristatus. Both of them very easy plants. And the reason I chose these two plants is because this aquarium is actually inspired by another aquarium. So I think it was April or May that I went to the uh, Interzoo convention in Germany and at the booth of Daniel Laplace there was an aquascape made by Stefan Hamel. He works for Daniel Laplace or I think he's retired now actually but he used to travel a lot to all these remote places and discover new plants so that aquascape was in inspired by one of his travels. It was a very minimal layout with only two types of plants, these two types and I know I kind of started thinking about that layout again I thought it would be a cool idea to kind of you know, recreate it in this aquarium. So I'm going to use the exact same plants and just see if it works. I mean, it's probably the least amount of plants I ever used in Aquascape. And if it doesn't work, we can always add, add in more plants, right? Okay, so the plants are prepared. So the first one, the uh, Heterantara, kind of looks a bit weird right now, but that's because it's an in vitro tissue culture cup. Uh, this plant is going to go in the background. So I'm thinking to plant it in the, in the right corner here, most of it. 
Then the middle section here, I'll leave open just so we can see kind of through and underneath the piece of wood. And I'll leave, and then I'll plant a little bit more in the left side over there, just a smaller portion. And then the other plant, plant the halantium. This one will go in the midground, so in between all the rocks. And then we'll leave the foreground open because it's such a thin layer of sand. There's, it's impossible to plant anything there, but once this plant starts growing and starts sending out runners, it will kind of make its way to the foreground as well. Okay, we're almost filled up. I'm currently making the last bit of RO water. In this aquarium, I'm trying to go for like 50-50 tap on RO because that's what the fish were used to in the previous layer as well. And I want to make sure that the, the water levels, the water parameters are sort of matching. I've also hooked up the filter again and added the heater. So you can kind of see the heater from this angle. It's not really what I prefer, but I mean, we need it. And in like two weeks from now, the plants are going to completely cover that. So yeah, so far it's looking interesting. It's uh, very different from my usual style. I mean, I've used four in vitro pots in this layout and that's not like me at all. But I think this is an aquarium where you kind of just have to have faith and trust the process and know that it's going to look good in a few weeks from now. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is add a plant on top of this big piece of wood. I mean, in the, in the previous layout, we had quite a lot of immersed growth, which looked really good and I really enjoyed it. So I want something here as well. So when I was at my local garden center to pick up the gravel for this layout, they had some really nice ferns. So I found this one. I think it's quite a generic fern, but it looks really good. So I want to find a way to be able to attach it on top of there. Okay, so let's see if we can move this from the pot and clean up some of this, some of the roots. We don't really want any of this substrate in the aquarium because I'm sure there's quite a lot of nutrients in here and that can definitely cause algae. So let's see if we can clean this up as much as possible. Okay, so I cleaned off most of the substrate. So we just have the roots left. I think we could just um, place this on top of the wood like, like so and have some of the roots in the, uh, basically in the water. I think that should work, but it might be too, too wet for this fern. I think ferns prefer it like not too wet. So I'm thinking to kind of make a little pouch with this uh, filter wool, kind of wrap the roots in the filter wool and that will kind of protect them as well. And that way we can kind of regulate the amount of water that's going into the roots, I guess. Honestly, I don't know if anything that I just said made any sense. Um, this is just very much an experiment, so I'm just going to give it a try. It's interesting. I'm not sure yet how I feel about this fern, but um, I think we just need to give it a little bit more time. I think it looks a little bit out of place right now because we don't have any green underwater yet. I mean, we do, but plants just need to grow a bit more. I think once we have more green underwater, there will be a better balance. Yeah, I've also just added some more RO water. I think the next thing I want to do is I want to try to add some moss on top of this piece of wood. I have some special material for that. Yeah, so I recently got some of this Terra tape. Never used it before, but I've seen other people use it. It's quite interesting. It's basically like a sort of like a fabric that's very good at holding moisture. So I want to place some of this on top of this piece of wood, then place some moss on top of this Terra tape. And that should basically keep the moss nice and moist. That's just something I want to try out here. I have a leftover pot of this Amblystegium serpents. It's a moss that I recently used in a little Wabikusa. Looks pretty good, but I'm not sure if the low humidity here will make it grow as well. So again, another experiment. Let's give it a try as well. Okay, I think we're ready to start adding the fish back in. Normally I would like to wait a little bit longer, first let the plants grow in, stuff like that. But in this case, I mean, the conditions in the pond are not really favorable, they're not great. So I'd rather get them out of there, get them into this fresh and clean tank. I think that's the best option here. Okay, so I just got a lot of the green neon tetras and some of the uh, dwarf pencil fish. Got my beautiful pair of Pissogramma Hongsloi, some more green neon, some more quarries, some more pencil fish. This one's a little bit of this one's a little bit of everything. And here is the last of it. So we've got loads of pygmy quarries, more green neon, some shrimp, 
puis auto sinkless. Here you go, guys. Two weeks have passed and it's slowly starting to look like how I imagined it. The plants have grown quite a bit already, but still need to get a lot more dense. The moss on top of the main branch seems to be doing good as well. Some of it looks dry, but I do see a lot of new growth. Even though it's a very simple layout, I'm really enjoying it. And I think that in a few more weeks from now, it's going to look really good. In today's video, we're going to set up a little nano aquascape in a 30 centimeter cube. I'm excited. Hope you guys are excited as well. Let's get started. Okay, so I have an empty 30 centimeter cube and I actually want to display it on the shelf. The thing is, however, that the shelf is currently full. So that means that one layout has to go. I think you can get rid of this one. So this one is actually one year old at the moment. So it's currently my longest running aquascape. And it still looks pretty good, but I think everybody has seen it by now. It's time for something new. Also the carpet. I used to have a mixed carpet with Liliopsis and Marsalea. And now it's starting to get completely taken over by moss. It's really infested in there. So it's just time for something new. And we still have some fish and some shrimp in here. So I'm going to take them out. I think the Phoenix rust borers are probably going to go in the vase because I already have some chili rice boars in there, so we can just uh, mix them together. Uh, the guppies, I'm actually going to give them a new home. Uh, one of my nephews has a birthday coming up, and I want to give them some, I want to give them some fish as a present. And then the cherry shrimp, I'll find a, a different aquascape for them as well. Okay, I think I've caught most of the fish in the shrimp. We'll probably find some more once we start removing some of the hardscape in the plants. Uh, the guppies went in the tank below that. They'll stay there in there temporarily. And over here, I have the Phoenix Reservoirs and the cherry shrimp. Now, one thing I still don't understand is the size of these cherry shrimp. I mean, they're very small, right? And they've been in here for a year. So why are they still so small? I mean, look at the vase. I've recently bought some new cherry shrimp. Uh, you can see one over there. And they're absolutely massive. So I don't understand why these other cherry shrimp are so small. So I was thinking to add this cherry shrimp in the vase as well, kind of just mix them, but I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I think I'm going to give those cherry shrimp to my nephew as well. He's never had a tank before, so what better way to get introduced to the hobby with guppies and cherry shrimp, right? Okay, so let's continue. Let's see if I can carefully remove the hardscape. We basically just have two rocks in here and then one bigger one and one smaller one. So it's a very simple hardscape. Look at this guys, this looks so good, so natural. If this would stay well above water, I would just place this rock on my coffee table and just enjoy it like that, you know? Unfortunately, that's not possible, but yeah, I'm just gonna quickly finish this tank, clean everything up, and then we can get started on our new, new scape.
Yeah, I think I don't really like the cube on that particular shelf. I was already thinking about it for the past few days. And the cube is now the biggest tank on the shelf, so it looks a bit out of place right there. I think we should move the cube to the bottom shelf. So the biggest tank is on the bottom, and as we go up, the tanks kind of get a little bit smaller, if that makes sense. Because over here, like it's quite big, you know? So I think we're going to just swap those two. I think that will look better, but we can do that later. We're actually going to move the tank to the table, and we can start scaping here. Okay, here we go. Nice empty tank, ready to be scaped. I'm super excited. So we have ourselves here a UNS30C. So it's a 30 centimeter cube, really high quality, beautiful optic white glass and these 45 degree metered edges. Looks really nice. And then the light is a Twinstar E series. So it's a pretty powerful light. I'm thinking to run CO2 in here as well. So it's gonna be a high tech setup. Um, in terms of inhabitants, I'm not sure yet. I'm thinking for sure some colorful shrimp. And I was also thinking about sparkling gouramis. I haven't had sparkling gouramis in a while. Probably one of my favorite nana fish as well. So, and maybe that's a nice combination. So I found this beautiful piece of wood in my local fish ship the other day. And I think it's perfect for this little cube. I love that there's a big branch coming out of it. We can definitely wrap that with moss. Um, but it's a bit too big though. I think we need to make some um, alterations, some adjustments, because it's touching the glass there, it's touching the glass there. And also it has quite a big, you know, it's called a, a stump. So I think you're gonna take my saw, cut a big piece off there. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. Here we go, that's much better. So I cut a big piece of the, uh, the stump basically. So now we can also place it further towards the back. Gives us a bit more space in front to put plants and other other hardscape. And the only question I have now is this twig. Do I have it in front of the light or behind the light? I think if I have it in front of the light, the wood is actually slightly tilted towards the front. That will give a bit more shadow in the foreground. It might be a bit more interesting. Yeah, something like this would be nice. So these rocks are called geostone or depending on where you buy, they might also be called Amelia stone. Some really interesting textures on there. It's actually the same type of rock that you saw in the beginning of the video that was covered with, uh, with plants that I pulled out of the other tank. So I think this is a nice combination. And now I have the, uh, the twig in front of the light. It's a little bit tilted. It's giving us some shadow in front. Let me just play around a little bit more with the hard scam until I'm happy with it. A slight change of plan. I was thinking to do the hardscape first, then add in some substrate in the back and cosmetic sand in the foreground. But I think I'm actually going to go all substrate, no, no cosmetic sand. So I'm going to take some substrate from the, the tank that we just took down. That one is still full of beneficial bacteria. We can use it as a base layer, cover it with fresh soil, and then we can uh, kind of cycle the tank faster as well. Okay, our base layer is in, and I'm actually going to cover that with some ADA Aquasol Amazonia version 2. I've actually never used a version 2 before, so it'll be interesting to see the results in terms of plant growth. So this Amazonia version 2 comes with a little satchel with extra supplement, so I'm going to push this in the substrate as well. Yeah, I think that's the hardscape done. I'm quite happy with that. I think we can go for a nice triangular style layout here. We want to keep this area mostly open. On the right side, have some dense plants, a nice carpet in the foreground. I think the next step is to take the wood out because I want to wrap parts, parts of it with moss. I have a few portions of uh, Taiwan moss from, from Dandelion plants. Actually, all the plants for this layout are sponsored by Dandelion plants, so thank you very much. So I'm going to take the wood out, wrap it with this Taiwan moss, and then we can continue. Okay, first part is done. I basically just wrapped a couple of branches with moss. Did that just with a simple cotton thread. And now I want to do the same for the above water part. So basically 
I think sort of this portion. But for that, I'm gonna use also this stuff, Teta tape. So this is like a type of fabric that can really like hold, moist, hold moisture so the moss is not gonna dry out. But basically the same here on the big shallow. So you can see here the Teta tape and then the moss is basically growing on top of that. It's actually doing quite well, especially over here. Still need to spread this way, but it just takes time. Here we go, it's looking good. A little bit of green instantly makes a difference. I forgot to mention, by the way, that a portion of the tether tape needs to be inside the water column, so we can wick up water all the way up there, keep the moss nice and moist. That's the idea. Let's hope it works. I think the next step is to glue the hardscape. I'm gonna glue the piece of wood to the rocks, so on three points, one there, one there, and the one in the back, and hopefully that should stop it from floating up. And of course, as always, I'm gonna use my cotton pads and liquid super glue for that. Okay, the hardscape is glued, so that means that we can now start planting. As I mentioned earlier, plants are sponsored by Dead Plants. Shout out to them. Got a really nice selection. You have this one, the Anubias Nana Kitten Mini, already attached to a little piece of wood. Really beautiful. We have my favorite crypt of all time, Crypt Legroy. Been using this one a lot lately. Uh, we have some beautiful stem plants, Rotala Vayanat, Rotala Laos. And then in the back, we have a really cool one. This is the Persicaria species Sao Paulo. It's very big right now and very green. Underwater is going to turn a really red color, super beautiful. I have a few more plants going in as well, so we'll go over everything in a bit more detail later. I think I'm going to start with the Anubias, because I have three of these portions, so we can like find the best suitable spot for them. So I think one in this corner would look really good. And then I have a really small one, we can place this underneath the wood. And then I have a slightly larger one, maybe this one on this side. Next up the Crypt Legroy. So this one is still very small right now. It will grow slightly bigger. So I'm thinking this one may be in front of the Anubis over there and kind of among the rocks here. So I think this is a really good spot for it. Can I wedge it in there? And this one is slightly bigger, so maybe in front here. And then I have one more pot that I kind of split up into portions. So we have three really small ones. I'm kind of going to spread them out, like one over there, one in the back and one on the side here. Yeah, that's looking good. I love those little bushes of Cryptocorian. Let's do a little view from the top. Really nice. Okay, let's keep going. The next one is kind of a new favorite of mine. This is the Lagananda Mi Bolvii Red. So it's gonna turn much more red than it is right now. Right now it's a bit greenish, brownish, but uh, I think under this twin star light, it should turn nice and red. I just have one, so it's gonna be a focal point right in the center there, just behind that crypt. Next up, I'm gonna fill in the foreground with dwarf hair grass, so let's do a little time lapse. I don't know why I was even considering going for cosmetic sand. This looks so good already. I love uh, dwarf hair grass as a carpet. And I can already see some colorful shrimp walking around here, you know? Okay, let's move on to the, uh, the rest of the plants. Most of them are going in the background. So the next one going in is this one, Persicaria Sao Paulo. Right now it's absolutely massive, so I'm actually gonna cut it a little bit. We'll basically cut it here and then we can plant both the top and the bottom part. And I wanna plant it here in this little opening. So just behind the branch, then it's gonna pop out over here and form a nice red focal point. Okay, then we have two plants left. Uh, two types of rotala. The first one is the rotala laos. And this one is going to turn slightly yellowish orangey. It's going to fill up the entire right corner. And then I have a green one. It's going to fill up the entire left corner. And then the last one, the Rotala species Wayanat. This one's still very small, it's in vitro. It's gonna go in the uh, left back corner. Okay guys, that's the planting done. 
actually really happy with it. So the stem plants in the background, they of course grow taller. And then I want the Laos to grow quite tall. But the green one I'll kind of keep short. So we have this yeah, triangular shape in there. We have the red focal point from the uh, Persicaria. Um, the Lagadandra will grow quite reddish as well. So yeah, I think it's going to look really good. The moss might be a little bit tricky. It's probably going to take some time, take quite a lot of maintenance, but that's okay. Okay, let's uh, give everything a little spray and then we can slowly start uh, moving everything towards the shelf. It has now been exactly three weeks since we started this cube and I'm really happy with how it's looking. After roughly 10 days I wanted to add some Otto Zinklers to help clean up the fungus on the wood. So I did a water test and the ammonia and nitrate were both zero. I guess adding the old substrate definitely helped cycle the tank faster. Earlier this week I bought four sparkling gouramis and added them to this tank as well. They're still quite small and a bit shy but I'm really happy with them. Lastly I added a small group of new Carodina shrimp and love how they stand out on the green carpet. I'm also finally seeing some new growth on the immersed moss, so I'm confident that this will develop well in the next few weeks. All in all, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Hope you guys like it as well, and if you did, do me a favor and smash that like button. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. In today's video I'm going to do something that I've never done before. I'm going to try to set up a paludarium. A little bit nervous, but also very excited. Let's get started. Now since I'm completely new to paludariums, I thought it would be best to call in a little bit of help. So I've reached out to my friends over at WIO. If you don't know WIO, they're a company based in Barcelona and they specialize in aquarium decor. So I actually went to visit them last year, I think. And they just have loads of different kinds of hardscape, like rocks, wood, substrates, all kinds of amazing products. And they've already helped me out a few times. They also provided the hardscape for the Big Shallow, if you guys remember that project. And they helped me out today as well. So they're kind of the main sponsor of today's video. So throughout this video, you're going to see me use a lot of different products from Wio. They've sent me some amazing stuff. So let's get started. This is the tank that we're going to be escaping today. This is a Noaza Styliner 125. It's measuring 70 centimeters from left to right. It's about 45 centimeters tall and it's 40 centimeters front to back. So it's a decent size. And regular viewers of the channel will know that this used to be my Africa biotope. Unfortunately, that layout didn't really develop like I imagined it. It also had some really stubborn algae issues. So I decided it would be best to just start over. So I already did a little bit of work yesterday. I took everything out, caught all the fish, kind of gave the tank a good clean. And I also added in this background. And this is the first product from Wio. So 
the background is made of cork and is compressed to turn it into one big sheet. So this sheet was measuring 70 by 50 centimeters, so almost the exact same dimensions as the tank. I had to adjust a little bit, cut off a few pieces here and there. But right now it fits perfectly and I think it looks amazing. So I glued it in place with silicone glue. And the reason I did that is because cork is very light and it's definitely going to float. So I applied a lot of silicone and then glued it to the background. And I basically left it like that for 24 hours. Then we also have a little bit of old substrate from the previous layout still in the tank. And I left this in here because this stuff is still full of beneficial bacteria. So hopefully that's going to help kickstart the new cycle. I'm also currently running the uh, canister filter on this tank just to kind of yeah, keep the beneficial bacteria in the filter alive as well. So hopefully once we're done, we can swap the filter back to this tank and this tank should, uh, yeah, should be almost cycled instantly. We should be able to add in fish uh, straight away as well. So the plan is to have this tank filled up about halfway with water. And then the submerged part is still going to be like an Africa themed biotope style layout. And then above water, I just want to have some simple terrarium plants, some mosses. Not really sure yet how this is going to look and how this is going to develop. But a lot of the decisions will be just be made as we progress through this build. So I think we should just, just get started. Let's start working on the hardscape for the submerged part. Now for the hardscape in here, I have something really cool, guys. I basically have an all-in-one hardscape kit from Wio. So in this box, you have everything you need to create a hardscape for a tank that's roughly 60 centimeters in size. If you have a bigger tank, you can obviously buy two kits, for example. So these come in a bunch of different types. I think they have 10 different varieties and they're all based around rivers throughout the world. So obviously the one that I got is from the Congo River. This is the River Kit Meer, I think it's pronounced. So with this box, you get four different items. Let's kind of go over them one by one. First up, this big bag is Wetland Artist. And this is the plant substrate from Rio. So this stuff contains a lot of nutrients and should help kickstart the plant growth. Then the second bag is the biotope bed. That is the decorative sand. Then behind that we have the nano boulders. So these are the small rocks. And then in this box we have the bigger rocks. Everything you need to create a nice hardscape. So let's uh, give it a try. So that's the first substrate layer in, it's looking really good. So I'm thinking to now move on to the bigger rocks. Got them right here. And we all call these bumblebee rocks. So they're really creative with their names. Um, I just checked the website and this rock is inert and doesn't affect the water parameters. So that's very good, really happy about that. So I'm just gonna play around with the rocks a little bit and see if we can come up with something that looks nice and then we can move on with the rest. Here we go, that's the first rocks in. So in this kit you get five rocks. I'm not sure if that's the same with every kit, but I got five rocks. Three of them were like large, two of them were more of a medium size. So now we can move on to those nano boulders. Okay, the plant substrate is in, the big rocks are in, the nano boulders are in. Now let's finish it up with the biotope bed. I think this is really gonna bring everything together. Here we go guys, that's the first part of the Paludarium hardscape done. <laughs> that was actually really easy, it took me maybe like 10 minutes or so. We love the decorative sand that we added in last, like there's so many little details in there, even like small pieces of twig. They'll probably float up once we fill up with water, so I'm thinking to kind of like wedge them in between the rocks just to make sure that they, uh, they stay down for now. So the submerged hardscape is done, that was very easy and very much in my comfort zone as well. But now for the hardscape above the water, that's something that I've <laughs> never done before. But I think I have a pretty cool idea for it. I mean, we already have the cork background and we also sent me a bag with like smaller pieces of cork. And I think this way we can kind of create a 3D background. So here's how they look like straight out of the bag. It's basically like a, yeah, a hollow piece of cork. So I have three of these pieces, but I'm thinking that technically we should be able to kind of split them open and then have like six halves. And that way we kind of have like a hollowed out tree that we can actually fill with plant substrate 
and put some plants in there. I think that would be very cool, but let's see if we can make that happen. <laughs> we did it. So that was actually pretty easy. So we now have four halves. This piece I'm going to keep hold just because it looks really nice. I kind of want to show it off as well, like show off the bark. And then these four pieces we can fill with plant substrate and put plants in there, some fern, some mosses. I think they will look really good. I mean, this is only three pieces. It might actually already be enough. I quite like how it looks. I also don't want it to be too crowded up in here, you know. I'm just going to glue these three pieces to the background. And once they're secure, I can always like add in more and see if that's necessary. I don't think so, but yeah, let's start gluing them. I'm going to try my usual method, the cotton pads and liquid super glue. I mean, it works for my aquarium hardscape. Not sure if it works for Paladarium Hearts game as well, but we're going to give it a try. Alright, everything is glued together, everything is secure, so I think that's the Hearts game. Pretty much done. I'm gonna add in some more details later on. But I think right now I just wanna fill up with water. I wanna see how this looks with water. So let's do that right now. It is now the next day, the water is cleared up nicely and the hardscape is looking really good. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. So I think we're now ready for planting. Now I told you guys earlier that Wheel specializes in aquarium decor. But lately they've also come out with new products for terrariums and paludariums. So they've actually sent me some really good stuff that we can use for the immersed section as well. So first up they basically sent me a box full of terrarium plants. So we've got loads of different uh, phytonias. We have a, uh, a creeping fig. We've got a really cool elkhorn fern. Never heard of this but looks really nice. And then we also have lo loads of different mosses. So over here we have some sphagnum moss. Uh, what's in here? Cushion moss, I really like the look of this one, Hypnum moss. Now of course these plants need some kind of substrate to grow on and the only thing we have in here so far is just dry cork, so that's not very good. So I'm going to try out another wheel product. Over here I have the sticky soil. I've never used this before, I've also not really seen it being used yet, so let's just open this up see what it is. Okay, I see. So it's basically just one giant substrate ball. You can you know, make it smaller. You can kind of shape it, I guess, as well. So we can just stick this onto the background and we can uh, fill the cork with this as well. Okay, so that was actually quite a lot of fun. So it's kind of like working with clay, you can just shape it and just push it in any crevice that you want. So I've just kind of placed it all over the background and on those pieces of cork. So now we gotta see if we can plant in there. Oh, and also like if you're spraying it, like it actually really soaks up all that moisture. So I think it's definitely a good substrate. I think we're there. I do have a few more plants, but I think I should stop here. Right now it looks good, it's not crowded, it looks natural. Really, really happy with that. Of course, we're not done yet. We still need to plant the underwater section as well. So let's do that right now. I've just received a big shipment from Dental Plants. Now this one was actually lost by UPS. So the plants were in the box for a whole week. So I was kind of afraid that they would look uh, very bad, but they still look healthy, they still look good. So let's take the ones out that I need. So definitely some of the crypts. We have some Anubias in here as well. Let's take them out, let's clean them up, start planting.
here we go so i ordered the three smallest crypt species that dental plants has in their assortment so we have the crypt parva the crypt lutea hobbit and the crypt uh, legroy and i also have some anubias i do have some more plants but let's just start with this first Okay, the water got a little bit murky, but I think this is enough green for the underwater part. Still trying to keep that biotope feel to it. So I think this is good. Now I'm sure some people are wondering, like Mark, you're using crypts. Wasn't this supposed to be an Africa biotope? That's true. And crypts are not from Africa, but I just like them. And I think they will fit well in here. So that's why I'm using them. So we're almost done. I just want to add two more products from Wio that I personally really like. Over here, I have mulch bed and I have wood bed. So in these two bags, you basically just have small pieces of twig, some pieces of wood, some leaves in there as well. And yesterday I already boiled some in a little pot of water and it's gonna release some tannins as well. So adding this to this tank is really gonna like give it that biotop feel, you know? It is now the next day and we're ready to add in the fish. I'm going to add in all the fish that were in the previous layout. So we're starting with the jelly bean tetras and the lamp Achilles. Then a couple bristlenose plecos. And lastly the crebensis. So four weeks have passed already guys, and this tank has been absolutely amazing. I think it's been one of the smoothest startup phases that I've ever had. Like right after I set this up, we actually went on holiday, so we were gone for two weeks. So I was a little bit worried that some of the terrarium plants might dry out, but I kept the lids completely closed, so the humidity was nice and high, and everything was fine. Came home after two weeks, the tank was absolutely spotless. And since then it's been nothing but enjoyment. I think in the past four weeks I've done one water change, I didn't have to trim the plants, the only thing I've had to do is to kind of thin out the floating plants because they've been uh, growing super fast. I just did another kind of thinning out session. So yeah, floating plants are growing super fast and I haven't actually been dosing any fertilizer. So I guess all the nutrients are coming from the substrate. So that's nice. I'm just really enjoying this thing, guys. Really fun. It's just something completely different, you know, like I've never done a polydarium before, but I can definitely see myself doing more polydariums in the future. Something that's been working very well is the standard Oasa lights. Initially I was planning to upgrade these to something a little bit more powerful, but they actually work really well in the setup because these tubes, like you can change the angle, so I can actually point them more towards the background, towards all the terrarium plants. And because of that, I think the terrarium plants have actually been, work, been growing very fast because the humidity is nice and high, they're receiving a lot of light, so I think the terrarium plants are very happy in here. And then with these lids, you can actually really control the humidity as well. So normally I just keep them completely closed, just like so, and then the humidity is nice and high, but then you do get a little bit of condensation on the glass. So if I don't want that, I just open them up a little bit more on both sides, and then you kind of increase the airflow, then the condensation just disappears and you have a nice clear view. So I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Wio for sending me all these amazing products for this Proletarium. It's just been really fun to make. And guys, if you're interested in trying some Wio product yourself, you can actually order directly from them. So I'll leave links to all the products in the video description, plus a special code. The guys gave me Wio MJ Aqua as a code. And if you use this code on checkout, you actually get a little gift for free. So if you go to the website, on the top right corner, there's a little section where it says gifts. And then you put the gift in your basket and then you apply the code and then the gift is for free. 
and we will send you something nice just as a thank you for, uh, for placing your order, you know? That's it for now, guys. Really hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to smash the like button. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today's video is basically one long build video about the Oasis Cable Line 90. I've set this tank up at the end of March of this year. It's now beginning of August, so I would say it's just over four months old. Now, usually when I do a build video, it's everything from start to finish, and the video is like 10, 15 minutes long. But because this tank is quite big, I also really want to take my time with it, so I've split it up into separate episodes. So this video is all those episodes combined, and I've made some cuts and edits to make it look like it's one long build video. And also, at the end of this video, we're going to come back to it, see how it looks four months later, and kind of go over everything that uh, has changed and things that went well, things that didn't go so well. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, we've managed to get through all three layers of cardboard, so it's definitely well protected. Now let's remove all this foil. Yeah, like I'm able to do that with one hand. Wow, I know it's just a glass box, but this is a very, very nice glass box. Let me actually put the light on so we can get a proper look at the glass. That's much better. So yeah, Oasis Caper Line 90. Well, I think everybody has kind of seen it by now. Definitely not the first one to have this tank. So it's uh, 90 centimeters. I think it's 45 by 45. And then the glass has these mitered edges. Super nice. Okay, let's move on to the, uh, to the cabinet. Okay, so that's the cabinet cleaned up as well. They give you this wooden plate to basically place between the, um, between the cabinet and the glass. But I kind of broke mine when, <laughs> when I was lifting it uh, up the stairs. So I think I'm going to skip this wooden plate and go for a, uh, a foamat instead. Hope that's okay. Let's take a look inside. Okay, so we have the slide out drawer. We have the magnets on the door. Then what else do we have? Over here, this little handle, I guess for your fishnet and your towel, stuff like that. We have a gap over there. I'm not sure if that's for the filter, for the hoses. I think this is removable. We can use that for the hoses, but I'll show you that in a minute. Then we also have a gap in the back for your, all your electrical wires, stuff like that. And then on the bottom, we have some holes. That is, I think, for the adjustable feet. That's perfect because my floor is very uneven, so I'm definitely going to need that. Well, current situation is not very good. Not good like that either. So let me grab an Allen key and let's actually see. Oh, they include an Allen key in here as well. So let me grab that one. Let me adjust the feet and then we can put the tank back on. Took a little bit of time, but we got it done. Let's see the level thingy. That is good. And that looks good enough. And there it is in its full glory. <laughs> that looks really good. Okay, so let's see. We're going to have the external canister filled on this side, of course. The question is, what am I going to be keeping on the shelf? Probably just some fertilizer, some fish food, just a few supplies, nothing special really. So yeah, let's just put the shelf in the middle for now. Nice, there's the shelf in, and I've also covered the holes for the adjustable feet. So they give you six of those really tiny white covers just to make it look super clean, you know? A few moments later. So I've basically just been decorating the inside of the cabinet. So here on the right side, I have my two hour aquarist fertilizer, the Oase Organics food line, my Seacam products, on the bottom the, uh, the power plug for the light 
and also for the CO2 system. Yeah, now it's complete with the Oasa Biomaster. I haven't been using the Biomaster in a while. On the Big Shallow, I was using a different filter, but I feel like for this set, we just have to use the Biomaster, right? So, yeah, I could hook it up already, but I don't have any um, glass lily pipes actually for this tank. I need to buy some big glass lily pipes set, and then we can hook up the filter. So, I think for now, this is it. Okay, back home from a pretty successful shopping trip. I've got two pieces of really nice spider wood, and then I also bought roughly eight kilos of a type of lava rock. Now normal like red or black lava rock is sometimes a little bit boring and pretty straight. This stuff, however, has a lot more like detail to it, a lot more, yeah, just really nice edges, you know? So yeah, I've got roughly eight kilos of this stuff, and I already had a little bit of it at home, so we should have enough to play around with. Now those pieces of wood are quite clean, but the rocks are relatively dirty, they're just very dusty, so I'm just going to give them a rinse under the tap, and then we can get started on our layout. Okay, so the rocks are all clean, the wood is pretty much ready to go as well. Now one thing with rocks is I would always recommend to try to find like a mix of different sizes. So here over here we got a couple of big ones and then on this side we have mostly smaller ones because it's just very difficult to make a nice hardscape loud if you only have rocks that are all the same size, you know. So always try to go for a mixed size. I think the next step is to go for a bit of a dry test run. I'm going to get some hardscape in the tank, just play around a little bit and then see if we can come up with something nice. Okay, so of course I already had a play around in the store so I kind of already know what I want to make but Maybe you don't. Let's say this is your first time or I know you don't you don't really have any inspiration. How do you get started? I think the best way to get started in this case is just by placing some things, some materials inside the tank. So just find your nicest piece of wood or your nicest rock, place it in the tank and just start playing around and just yeah, see how it looks. Maybe change the angle. Maybe like this. And just keep doing that until you find something that looks good, that looks pleasing to the eye, and then you start and you or you move on from there. Now another thing that always really helps me is to make a decision on the kind of the, the shape of the layout. So either a triangular style shape, convex shape, or a concave shape. Let me just quickly demonstrate that. So if this piece of wood would be our only piece of hardscape, we could actually make a pretty nice uh, convex layout, or also referred to as an island style layout. So we place this uh, hardscape directly in the center, keep the left side and the right side open as much as possible, and just focus on the plant, plant growth in the middle as well. So we could really like, yeah, almost create like an island style layout. That'd be pretty cool. Um, then triangular style, if you just move it to the left side, we could do a triangular style like this and have the plants starting high on the left and moving down lower to the right. We could do a triangular style layout in the opposite direction as well. So have plants high on this side and much lower on that side. If you want to go for a concave style layout, you would have hardscape on the right side as well as on the left side and keep the center area mostly open. Now I really love to do triangular style layouts. I actually currently have a few. So there's one on this side. Mm, yeah, so it's mostly triangular like this. But the stem plants on the right side still need to grow a little bit taller. I have one here in the opposite direction. So it's very tall on the left side and much lower on the right side. And here we have another triangular style. So stem plants still need to grow a little bit taller on the left side. But once they do, we have a nice shape like this. And I'm gonna go for a triangular style in this tank as well. Basically with the way the wood sits right now, I'll adjust a little bit, but we'll have tall stem plants on this, on this side and then lower plants on that side. So it's going to be a triangular style like this. And the reason I chose that is because over here we have our couch. So this is where we sit at night, maybe we'll watch a movie, maybe we'll have some dinner. And then I can still view the tank from the, uh, from the side as well. So it's viewable from the front, but also from the side. And if we would flip that around, now I would have a triangular style like this. Like it wouldn't be as nice because then on this side would be a lot of hardscape, a lot of tall stem plants. And it wouldn't really look, it would be as, as pleasurable to view from this side, you know. So something you can think about as well whenever you're making a new hardscape. Think about the placement of the tank. See from which side you view it the most. Maybe just from the front but maybe from the side as well. 
And think about that with the uh, with how you make your layout. So for this particular layout, I'm going to add in the substrate first. Of course, I'm using aqua soil, and then I'm going to add the hardscape on top of that. It doesn't always have to be like that. Sometimes I can also add in the hardscape first and do the substrate after that. It just kind of depends on what you're making, and it also depends on if you're using just aqua soil or just plant substrate or using plant substrate and sand. If you're using sand in the foreground, for example, it's a lot easier to first add in the hardscape, create a proper barrier, and then add the substrate in the back and the sand in the foreground, you know? But for this particular layout, I'm going with just aquasol, just plant substrate, and no sand. Now, when it comes to smoothing out the, uh, the soil, I always see people using these sort of like called sand flatteners. I'm actually not really a big fan of those. I much rather use a, uh, a large paintbrush. It's just a little bit smoother. Even if you, if you hit this against the glass, you know, there's nothing wrong. But if you hit this against the glass, I don't know, I just don't really like the sound of that. So I'd much rather use a paintbrush. Yeah, I can see there's not really enough. I want to go for like roughly five centimeters in front and almost double like 10, 12 centimeters in the back. So I'm going to add a little bit more aqua soil. So I found some leftover Daniela Caper soil. I found some leftover Amazonia version 2. And I found some leftover Tropica soil. The Tropica is actually the powder variant, so it's a much smaller grain. So I'm going to save that till last. Finish the hardscape first and then add a nice thin layer of the powder soil on top. Okay, there's most of the substrate in. I've kind of brushed it away from the front glass. Later on, we're gonna fill that in with the powder soil so we don't mix the two different grain sizes. It's not really a big deal, but if you can try to avoid it, then it would be nice. And of course, a nice slope towards the back just to help increase that sense of depth. Yeah, I think we can now uh, start adding in our hardscape. Good thing about the substrate as well is that it kind of acts as a cushion. So once you place in the hardscape, it just stands up a lot easier, you know? can kind of just push it in and it will just stand on its own. We don't need to support it with rocks anymore, so... Yeah, see that's looking good. This one is not super straight anymore. This one has a nice flow towards that area. I like that. So at this point, a lot of it is just like uh, experimenting and trial and error. You just have to start adding things, start moving things, tilt it this way, that way, until you're happy with it, you know? Like same thing with the rocks. I like to just look at the rocks, see which side has the most detail, which side looks the best, and then make sure that that side is facing forward. But I'll probably move it like a hundred times until I'm happy with it. Especially with this thing, you know, like this is my biggest setup. And I want to make sure that this one looks really, really good. So I'm going to take my time with it. And it's also the time where you have to like get in the zone, get in the focus mode. And I'm also going to put the camera, well, I'm not going to put the camera away, but I'm going to put the microphone away and just get in the zone and just enjoy the process. All right, it's now the next day. Yesterday I left it like this. I was really happy with it. And this morning I woke up, still happy with it. So that's good. Sometimes it's good to take a few days and every day you can come back and make some adjustments. But yeah, overall it's just good to take your time with, uh, with hardscaping. So the next step is to secure the hardscape because I'm lazy and impatient. I didn't pre-soak the wood, so it's still very dry and it's gonna float up. 
So of course I could just add a rock on top of the wood that should keep it down, but I don't really like how that looks. I'd much rather just glue it to the rocks that we have right now. Um, because we use lava rocks, sometimes a little bit tricky. I mean, normal lava rocks are quite porous and they still want still very light. So if you would glue a piece of wood to a very light lava rock, it's just, yeah, both of them are just gonna float up. These lava rocks, however, are quite dense and they're still quite heavy, so should be no problem. Um, I'm gonna use my favorite technique, uh, cotton pads and liquid super glue. I showed this many times already on my channel, but it's just very easy. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this cotton pad, wedge it in between the points that I want to connect, then add a few drops of liquid super glue, just to saturate the cotton pad. It's gonna stick everything together, super easy. So if we look at this biggest piece of wood, um, it's touching a rock here, so we can connect it there. Uh, we can connect it somewhere over here, um, in front of here maybe as well, and then another one in the back over there. So then we have four points where the wood is connected to the rocks. Should be enough to keep it down. Okay, everything is stuck together, but right now I do have quite a lot of that cotton pad visible. Kind of want to cover that up. So I've poured a little bit of Aquasol in this cup. I'm kind of just gonna crush it into a very fine powder. And then we'll use that Aquasol powder to cover up the cotton pads. Okay, so everything is secure. We can do a little test. Nothing is really moving anymore. This one's still a little bit flexible, but it's not gonna float up, so that's fine. So the only thing left to do now is to finish the substrate. I have the Tropica Powder Aquasol. I'm just gonna pour it in the front here, and then we should be done. So I think that's the hardscape done, guys. I'm really happy with it. Of course, by no means is this a very complicated hardscape. It's actually very simple. We just have two pieces of wood and a couple of rocks, but yeah, it's kind of my style. I like to keep things simple. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you might have noticed that already. Very simple hardscapes, and then I like to make it look pretty with a lot of plants in there. So can't wait to see this planted as well. I just remembered that I still wanted to add a background to the aquarium. So I'm gonna add a layer of this glass foil to the back glass of the aquarium. Um, in the future, I might upgrade to one of those fancy light screens. Um, I currently have one on my 70 scape stink, but I know I don't really use it that often and it's quite pricey, so I'm not sure yet. For now, we're gonna go with the, uh, the glass foil. Okay, tank is filled up, or almost filled up. I just finished fit fitting the lily pipes and the hoses. Now it's time to prime the filter. The filter is going to take up another well, 10, 15 liters of water, I guess. So then we can fill all the way to the top and yeah, call it a day, I guess. Okay, we've got a lot of plants to work with, guys. So my inspiration for this layout basically came from a tank from the 88 Gallery in Japan. 
I saw a video about it on YouTube and I have a picture, overlay the picture right now. So I tried to order as many yeah, sort of similar plants. Yeah, so we've got loads of dwarf hairgrass for the foreground, a couple pots of moss for the wood, uh, different types of crypts over here, some really nice Anubias, uh, normal hairgrass, and then loads of stems. Got the Lutvigia super red, Hygrophila polysperma, and then loads of Rotalis as well. So yeah, this is gonna be quite a challenge to prepare everything. So let me just uh, get started right away. Okay, so I think that was like roughly one hour of plant preparing condensed into like five or six seconds. So definitely took some time, but we got there in the end. I still have a few pots left. We can always prepare more if we need it, but I think for now we've uh, got quite a lot already. So this looks really good. Just loads of really healthy plants. I think the next step is to drain the tank and get started. Yeah, let's start draining the water. It's actually quite clear. Yesterday it was uh, quite cloudy. So I did a small water change, but today the water is crystal clear, so that's good. Okay, water is drained so we can begin planting. I'm going to start with the dwarf hair grass, of course in the foreground, but I also want to make a curve along uh, to, uh, towards the back. So we're going to have like a little curve over here, maybe a little bit in this section as well, but we'll have to see. Obviously this is going to take a long time. I have a lot of plants and a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to put on some music, do a, a time lapse on the camera and just enjoy the process. Okay, we've got a good amount of hair grass in already. I'm probably gonna add more later, but for now I want to move on to some crypts. So the crypts are gonna go between the rocks and the wood, and I'm probably gonna have some empty spaces after that, and then I can fill it in with more hair grass. Okay, the first crypt going in is the Wendy Ti Compact. I also used this one in the first layout of the Big Shallow, and I really loved it there. Looks really good. Dark brown leaves. I have three pots of this one, and I'm thinking to just keep them I mean, I could split, up, split the pot up into smaller portions, but I'm actually just gonna keep these as it is. The second crypt going in is the Crypt Becchetti. Becchetti, I don't know. Actually, I actually haven't used this one in a long time, so I don't think I've ever used it in a high-tech setup. So I'm curious to see how this one is going to develop. I'm gonna have three pots, so one, two, and then the final one is gonna go underneath here. I think that's a good spot for it. Slightly shaded, but should be okay. The third crypt was an in vitro pot, so it's still very small. And it's only gonna grow to about 10 centimeters, so it should stay slightly smaller than these two. So I'm gonna put it a little bit more in the foreground. So over here, for example, we can put a portion underneath this piece of wood here. This next plant is a new favorite. Um, I like it a lot. It's Lagananda Mi Baldi Eye Red. I have two pots for this. I'm only gonna plant it in one position. So it's gonna be like a nice focal point. I think a layout like this really needs some Anubias. So I've got some really nice Anubias Nana Bonsai. I've got five pots of this, and I'm gonna to try to wedge it in between the cracks of the wood and the rocks. Okay, so I've used a lot of dwarf hair grass in the foreground and to the side. I've also ordered a few pots of the longer, the normal hair grass. And I'm gonna use this basically over here and also on the left side over there, just behind or just next to the dwarf hair grass. And this is hopefully going to accentuate that triangular composition. Things starting to look really good. So we can now fill in the rest of the areas with more dwarf hair grass. So we still have an empty patch over there, some more empty patches, you know, along the front here. And then we can move on to the background, I guess. Okay, moving on to the background. I was planning to have well, four different stem plants in the background. 
but I think something went wrong with the order because I'm missing one stem plant. It's no big deal though. We can just uh, add it later. Yeah, the plan was to start in the corner with the Hygrophila polysperma, then move on to a red one, uh, move on to a slightly orange stem plant, and then finish with a green one again. So we have green, red, orange, green, and then the green carpet. So still the plan, but um, yeah, I just have to wait for the other stem plant. So yeah, first one going in, Hygrophila polysperma. Uh, this is, yeah, I think it's probably one of the most popular aquarium plants. Very, very fast growing as well. So it's gonna be interesting to see if I can manage to uh, keep it, yeah, main, um, maintain it properly, keep it trimmed, or if it's just gonna take over too fast, but we'll see. Hopefully with a nice lean dosing routine, it will not be too fast. Moving on to the Ludwigia Palustris Super Red. Probably one of my favorite red stem plants. Okay, and then the third stem plant is the Rotala Rotonifolia Laos. Really like, like this one, quite an easy plant as well. It's gonna be like a nice orange, orange color to the leaves. Okay, it's a background planted as well. I'm wondering if up until this point, some of you have wondered where are the jar ferns? Like surely he must be using jar ferns in this layer, right? You're absolutely right, but I got the jar ferns Right here, these are my java ferns. Let me just explain. Um, I had a lot of java fern in my 70 liters capers tank and I'm planning to take the tank down, uh, replace it with something else. But of course I didn't want to throw away the java ferns. I wanted to use them in here. But I made a mistake in the tank by mixing two different types of java ferns. I thought it would look natural, but actually I didn't really like it. So I used uh, Trident and the Mini. So I wanted to, to separate them, but of course very difficult. Everything has grown together and intertwined. So I separated the trident and basically cut out, cut off all the leaves and just uh, bunched a few rhizomes together. I'm going to use it in this tank. Of course, you're not going to see it in the first week to two weeks, but surely after a month, we're going to start seeing new growth and it's going to look very good in a, in a little bit of time. Okay, so I've got three of these trident java fern rhizome bunches. Hopefully it stays that way. Maybe we'll add a drop of super glue. I'm thinking one in the center here, maybe. Let's do another one on this side as well. And just like this layout can't be without jar ferns, I think it also can't be without moss. So I was thinking a lot about how to apply this, if I'm going to tie it or if I'm going to glue it, but tying it is just very difficult, especially because the hardscape is already in place. So I'm just going to glue a little bit of moss to some branches and then call it a day. And it is now the next day. Things are looking good. We had a few stem plant bunches that floated to the surface, but we can fix that in a minute. Uh, last night I also swapped the light around, so we now have the cable on the left side, so it's yeah, kind of a little bit more neat over here. And on this side we have just a completely clear view, you know, so really enjoying that. Now there's a few things that we still need to do today to make sure that this thing gets the best possible start, you know, with the best possible plant growth and the least amount of problems. I've already put the light on a timer, so I'm going for eight hours and I think it's roughly 50% intensity. Um, we still need to uh, add the CO2. Of course, this is a high-tech setup, so we need to get the CO2 going. Uh, we need to do water changes because we've used aquasol as a substrate. We need to do quite a lot of water changes. So I'm going to be doing like 50% every day for the first week and every other day for the second week and so on and so on. Uh, besides that, yeah, we need to add some beneficial bacteria to the setup. And oh, there's one more thing that I want to do that I've actually never done before, but you guys are going to see that in a minute. Okay, so I'm currently draining the tank. Now to make sure that everybody understands why we need to do these water changes, I just did a water test for ammonia. And as you can see, it's light green. This is supposed to be yellow. Right now we have an ammonia level of one milligram per liter, which is 
quite a lot considering that I only filled this tank up yesterday late at night and it's now like quite early in the morning so just imagine if you don't do water changes for a couple of days you know so yeah water changes uh, once per day for the first week every other day for the second week every second day for the third week and so on and so on uh, next up let's replant those floating bunches Okay, plants are replanted. Now while the tank is still draining, we can also start working on the CO2 system. On the Big Shallow, I was using a inline CO2 reactor. But I think in this tank, I'm just gonna go for a simple CO2 diffuser. Here we go. CO2 is working. Bubble counter installed. I love those shiny things, you know, it looks, just looks really cool. So the tubing goes in the cabinet on the back side. And then over here we have the CO2 bottle with the CO2 regulator just behind the filter. Okay, so that's done. I'm also filling the tank back up again. And uh, it was a little bit more than the 50% of the water change, but it doesn't matter. Just If you just do big water changes, then you're fine. I'm also just using tap water, by the way. I'm not using RO water. But actually most of my tanks have tap water, just a few of them have RO, but if I would have to use RO in this tank, that would be uh, an insane amount. So no, just tap water and this whole return pump situation, uh, this thing right here is just an old filter inlet from a JBL filter. Attached to that I have a long garden hose, this hose goes to the kitchen and in the kitchen I have a, a pump in my sink. So that's just pumping the water right in, straight from the tap, um, I don't have to dechlorinate the water. I'm just trying to sort of match the temperatures to what the temperature is in the tank. I'm using a heater already. The heater is, heater is set to 20, 23 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I think that's it. Let's move on to the next step. So now that we've installed the CO2 system, it's also very important to add a CO2 drop checker, just so we know if we're, we're injecting the correct amount of CO2. So I'm gonna add this on the opposite side of the CO2 diffuser. So I'm just gonna add it here next to the CO2, or next to the filter outflow. Just like so, and hopefully within a few hours, this will turn nice and green. Okay, water change is done. We've added the plants, we've added the CO2. I mentioned earlier that I want to add something that I've never done before. That's actually to add an air pump. I want to run an air pump on this tank at night. And basically I want to increase the oxygen levels at night. So what happens during the day is we inject a lot of CO2 and that helps, to help, that helps the plants to grow and the plants will produce oxygen. But at night, the plants actually take in oxygen. So at night, the oxygen levels kind of drop a little bit. And that's not really good for the beneficial bacteria in this tank because they need a lot of oxygen as well. And of course the fish, later on we're gonna add fish. We wanna make sure that they get a lot of oxygen. So yeah, I wanna run an air pump at night. And the idea for this basically came from the ADA gallery in Japan. Because over there, what happens at night once, or once, the lights, once the lights turn off, they actually raise the lily pipe outflow. So then they get more surface agitation and then they bring in more oxygen in the cram. But I don't wanna be like moving the lily pipe up and down every single day so i'm gonna try an air pump okay so we got an air pump this one is uh, supposed to be super silent and i just tested it and it really is uh, we've got some tubing we've got an air stone and we've got a check valve now i'm not going to be using this air stone i'm actually going to use something else i got myself an air diffuser also from aquario very similar to the co2 diffuser and this one is supposed to make the air bubbles very fine as well because with a normal air stone once the bubbles rise up to the surface, they kind of splash a lot of water. That's what I want to avoid. So hopefully with this air diffuser, we're not going to have that issue. Not sponsored or anything. I just bought this with my own money. So yeah, let's just test it out. So the air diffuser actually has a green ceramic disc. Very interesting. I'm going to place it in the back left corner, right? Because I don't really want to see it too much. But I'm thinking we just do a little test run first where we can see it properly. So let's just add it here, connect it to the pump and then see how it works. Here we go. Definitely very small bubbles. <laughs> Quite impressed with that. Over here I have the pump. And well, I can't hear it. I only hear the filter humming. So yeah, I'll leave a link for this in the video description as well if you want to pick one up. Yeah, so I'm going to place it here in the back left corner. And then I'm going to put the pump on a timer. I'm thinking to just have it come on as soon as the light turns off. And then stop as soon as the CO2 turns on basically. So. Yeah, quite, quite long, but it doesn't really consume a lot of electricity, so that's fine. If you are going to be doing the same thing, make sure that you do add that check valve, because if once it turns off, 
water can start flowing back into the system and it can actually drain your tank quite a bit so you want to make sure you avoid that so i think we're basically almost done and now we just need to wait for this tank to get cycled so we can add in the fish super excited about that to make sure that we can add in the fish rather quickly i'm going to add some beneficial bacteria so here i have cecum stability these are just beneficial bacteria in a bottle and we can just add a little bit to the water column we don't need much and hopefully then they will start colonizing in the substrate and in the filter and yeah just help speed up the cycling process of course we need to make sure the plants start growing as well and for that i'm going to add some fertilizer now we already have quite a lot of nutrients in the substrate so we don't really need a lot of fertilizer so i'm going to start dosing the apt zero and this is basically just micronutrients and potassium because the substrate will mostly release uh, some nitrate and some phosphate but not really like potassium and micronutrients and iron stuff like that so i'm going to st start dosing this the recommended dosage is three milliliters per hundred liters daily this tank is 180 liters but i mean it's still yeah i mean the tank the, the plants still need to establish and start growing so we don't need a full dose yet i'm i'm thinking so i'm probably just start with half a dose So it's now been more or less one month since the start of this aquarium. It's starting to look pretty good. Uh, plants still need to grow in a little bit more, but kind of past the ugly phase now. I've also added in some more fish and I'm really, really excited about these new additions. So I've added in six of these little guys. They're called the African butterfly cichlids. And I think these fish are like the perfect dwarf cichlid for a plant tank. Because they don't really dig into the substrate. They're very tolerant of different water parameters. They're not super aggressive either. They don't grow too big. And they should be very easy to breed as well so super excited about them they're not really they already have quite some color but they should definitely color up a lot more they've only been in here for like three days now so yeah really, really very excited about these fish now after about three weeks something interesting happened with this aquarium as well i uh, basically got a huge yeah explosion or infestation with these really tiny bugs you can kind of see them on the rock there and these are called seed shrimp and I've had a few of them here and there, some other things as well, like I've seen them before, but the amount that I currently have in this aquarium is pretty insane. Um, I was kind of hoping that the uh, African butterfly cichlids, cichlids would eat them, but it seems like they haven't really yeah, done that at all. So these sea shrimp, apparently they feed off waste organics in the tritus, so it kind of makes sense. Like around three weeks, I had a huge, yeah, thick slime layer on the wood. So of course those sea shrimp were like feasting on that and just multiplying like crazy. So I'm hoping that now that the slime is gone and I'm just not feeding too much, so there's not really much food left for them. I'm hoping that their numbers will slowly start to decline because well, they're not really annoying or anything, but yeah, it's just kind of, kind of weird to see all these tiny bugs crawling around into the substrate. There we have it, the new Skylight Hyperspot FM. Really happy with that. I like that it's the smaller unit so we don't have this light spill on the edges. Just looks better, you know? This is a little bit thicker though, but um, I don't mind that. And I'm really happy that they, they still kept the, uh, the mirror. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see, but you can see it over here. It's just a cool little detail, you know?
Okay, back to the present time. The last clip that you saw was from end of April when the tank was just one month old. So let's see how it looks now, roughly three months later. I'm really happy with how this tank is looking right now. I don't think it's as peak yet. I think there's still things that we can improve, but in general, I think it looks really good. Now, it definitely hasn't been a smooth journey. I think in around two months, this tank was actually starting to get a lot of black brush algae. I think it was a multiple, yeah, multiple causes for that. First of all, we had a very early summer. So at around May, beginning of June, we had like a really warm temperature. So it was very hot in the house and warm water always leads to more algae issues. Another thing was the, the cichlids, they were actually breeding a lot. So because of that, I was kind of feeding them more to kind of compensate for the loss of energy. So I was actually adding a lot of frozen food into this tank, which probably caused a bit of a, a nutrient imbalance, I guess. Another thing was the light. I think it was kind of underestimating how powerful this light is. So I was just running it yeah, too strong, too, at a too high percentage. And I should have uh, dimmed it down a bit more. And also the CO2. So you saw in this video that I used the CO2 diffuser on this side of the tank. And I think that wasn't the CO2 distribution just wasn't optimal and because that some plants in the, in the background were also not really growing properly. So after I switched to an inline diffuser, yeah, things just really uh, cleared up basically. So in terms of the, the setup and the equipment, things haven't really changed that much. Um, I have removed that air pump. I mean, the idea was nice, but it just wasn't really working properly. I was still getting quite a bit of a, an oil film on top of the, the water surface. So instead I've just uh, switched to a uh, intake with a skimming portion and now the surface is always nice and clean the oxygen exchange is good and yeah i think that was just uh the idea with the air pump was nice but i think the skimmer just works better yeah and like i said i've now switched to an inline co2 diffuser this one is from co2 art so it goes directly from the regulator to the uh, to the outflow now that's been working very well really happy with the oasa biomaster as well i cleaned the pre-filter maybe once a month or so yeah, I think I've done it like three or four times now. So it's very easy to maintain. I don't actually use the heater at the moment just because we're in summer and it's still about 23 degrees Celsius in the house. Then this side of the cabinet has turned into a bit of a mess. I really need to sort this out. I am planning to add a dosing pump. I got this one from uh, Ecotech Marine. I got it from Bulk Reef Supply. And I'm planning to add this one because we're going on holiday soon and I just want to keep adding liquid fertilizer even when we're gone for almost two weeks. I am still dosing the APT0, so this is a very lean fertilizer. And sometimes I'm also adding a little bit of this, the Adela Liquid Plus. It's like a complete liquid fertilizer, also has a nitrate and phosphate. Then I've also made a few changes inside the tank. I mean, of course, the hardscape is still exactly the same. I've just added a few plants. Uh, the most obvious one is, of course, the Valles Neria with the reddish, brownish, bronze leaves. I think that looks really good, really happy with that. I've also added a little bit more Trident Java Fern. You can see a new bunch over here in the corner. Yeah, the trident fern on this side is just not doing very well. You can see this one over here has like some brown spots on it. It's just not growing, it's actually melting. So not sure what's going on over there. And then one more plant is the uh, this water lily over here. This one is called Hydroclase nymphoides. I think it's like a South American water lily. And this one is about to, uh, about to flower, so that's really cool. Fish have actually all stayed the same. And the only thing I've done is I've removed the female honey grammy. So currently we only have the male in here. I just don't see him at the moment. Yeah, I've removed the female because um, I think they were kind of fighting. The female was a little bit roughed up. So I've just removed her, moved her to a different tank. And then I've added um, four Siamese algae eaters just to kind of help with the BBA a little bit. And of course the stars of the show, the African butterfly cichlids. These guys are doing really good. Still have all six of them. And they've laid eggs. They have had babies a couple of times. It's always like the same pair. I think it's this male and then the female that's behind there. Yeah, it's always the same pair. And then they have babies and they last for a couple of weeks, but then eventually they, uh, they just get eaten, you know? But yeah, this is just a really cool dwarf cichlid. And yeah, I've had them for three months now. I don't think they've really grown much actually, so. Yeah, they kind of stay this size, this size I guess. Yeah, just a really cool dwarf cichlid, very easy to keep 
eats everything is not fussy about water parameters so yeah i highly recommend to uh to give these guys a try if you uh, can get them in your area yeah so as i mentioned i don't think this tank is at its peak yet i think there's still a few things that we can improve mainly plant density so for example the trident ferns i'd love to have them a little bit more dense also the red, the red stem plants and the hygrophila in the back left corner they could get a little bit more dense but besides that um, i'm really happy with that we do also still have a little bit of algae in here so it's a bit hard to see but um, along the, the front glass here in the hair grass carpet there's some blue green algae and it's, that's the only location where it is it doesn't appear anywhere else inside the tank but it just keeps coming back here so i'm thinking of taking a syringe uh, with a needle and actually filling it with some um, liquid carbon and basically just injecting that all along the foreground i haven't done that yet because it's probably going to give us some die off on the uh, on the hair grass carpet which of course i didn't want to have before i make this video so I'll probably do that uh, right after. And then there's still a little bit of black brush algae here and there as well. And of course we can't have a completely algae free aquarium, but it could be a little bit less. Yeah guys, that's it for now. Really hope you enjoyed this longer build video. If you did enjoy, then don't forget to smash that like button. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Welcome back everybody. Hope you're doing well. Today we're doing a fun little project that I've been planning for a while. I basically want to make a mini indoor pond Almost like a miniature version of the Big Shallow Aquarium. Yeah, I'm excited. Let's get started. Now, regular viewers of the channel will know that I've recently got rid of my Big Shallow Aquarium and I've replaced it with this 90 cm standard size tank. Now, if you've never seen a Big Shallow before, I will overlay some clips of that tank. I had it for two years and it had three different layouts. And my favorite one was the one with all the wood sticking out. And that's the one that I kind of want to sort of recreate today, but on a very small scale. And this is the tank that I want to use for this project. So as you can see, it's like a little shallow tank. And it almost has the exact same dimensions or shape as the big shallow. But this one is slightly different because it's um, the bottom glass panel is raised. So it almost looks like the tank itself is floating. So really nice optic white, yeah, clear tank. Okay, so we have ourselves a tank. Next thing we need is a light. And for that, I'm going to use this light. I found this one digging through my supplies. This is an AquaGrow Unique Nano. It's a pretty old light. I don't think this brand even exists anymore, but the light still works just fine. It's very similar to a Chihiro C2. And I will leave a link to that light in the video description if you're interested. I also found this clamp. This is from an actual Chihiro C2. So we can use this clamp to attach the light to the glass. And we have light. I think it looks pretty good. We might even be able to raise the light a little bit more or lower it depending on how the uh, hardscape turns out. But for now it's okay. So let's get started on the hardscape. So of course it's going to be impossible to make a one-on-one -on -one copy of the Big Shallow. We don't really have the same materials. It's a completely different size as well. So we're just going to go for a triangular style layout with wooden rocks. So I found some really nice uh, small pieces of serious stone. In the Big Shallow I was using black lava but I want a little bit more contrast. So we're going to go for a gray rock. And then I also have some really nice pieces of wood. This is called a uh, scaper root. It's basically like a black version of the regular spider or red more wood. I really like using this stuff. I've already used it a couple times and some pieces still have some white glue marks on them, but that's okay. We can cover it up later with plants. So yeah, let's see if we can come up with a nice layout in here. Okay, so let's see. I think I want to go for a triangular style coming from, from this side because the light is facing this way as well. So we can kind of have it go down to the right side. So let's see if we can come up with something. Here we go. I think that looks pretty good. We have a nice, nice line to it. Some nice pieces underwater, some nice pieces coming out of the water. Yeah, let's see if we can um, make it even better with some of these rocks.
Okay, I wasn't really planning on adding this many rocks, but I just kept stacking them and stacking them and it kept looking better and better, so I just uh, continued. Yeah, I think that's the hardscape pretty much done. Um, the, the rocks also kind of have a function besides just looking pretty. I also want them to kind of stop the substrate from rolling forward because in the back here, I want to kind of fill in these areas with some plant substrate. We're going to have quite a few plants growing immersed, so I want to make sure that they get a proper amount of nutrition. So, yeah, I'm quite happy with the hardscape like this. We're going to have some cosmetic sand in the foreground, so we need to make sure that we have a, a good barrier. So we still have quite a few gaps between all the rocks and the wood, and I want to fill it up with some of this white filter floss. So I'm just going to take a little bit with my tweezers and just kind of wedge that, well, let's see, for example, in here. Just like so. So right now it is still visible, but of course we're going to cover it up with some plants, with some, some sand and some small gravel. So later on we'll not be able to see it anymore, but for now it's just going to make maintenance a lot easier. If you have all this plant substrate constantly rolling forward, sp uh, sp spilling on top of the sand, it's just going to make maintenance horrible. So this way, yeah, we just make things a lot easier. So this is how it looks right now from the back. So as you can see, I've used quite a bit of the filter floss. That's okay, it doesn't really have any negative effect or anything. Uh, it's just gonna make uh, our life a lot easier. Let's see how it looks from the front. So we still have quite a, quite a big gap there and you can kind of see the filter floss, but nothing a uh, plant will not fix. I think we can, uh, we can now add in the substrate in the back. So I found some leftover aqua soil. This is the Daniel Escaper soil. And I think this is perfect for this little setup because this stuff doesn't, it still has nutrients, but not too much, you know, like, not like ADA Amazonia, for example. I think if we use a very nutrient rich substrate in here, we might run into some algae issues because we have pretty strong light. And I'm also going to run the light for like 12 hours a day or something, so quite, long, quite a long photo period. So I think if we have a very nutrient rich substrate, then we're probably going to get some algae in the, uh, in the aquatic section, which I want to avoid. So I think this stuff is perfect. Okay, substrate is in. As you can see, it's almost all the way to the top. It's kind of like you see in, in a natural pond, you know, you have the water area and then to the sides you always have this sort of like a swamp area where you have all the grasses and the, you know, the, the big plants growing out. So I think that's good. Um, I was thinking about gluing everything. Normally in all my aquascape setups, I glue all the hardscape together, but I think in this case it's not really necessary. I mean, this piece of wood is firmly held in place by the rocks. Same goes for this one. And these two pieces are still quite loose, but we can kind of move them around still and it kind of also depends on the plants, which plants we're going to use and how, where we're going to position them. We still have some flexibility, you know? So I think let's, let's add in the cosmetic sand and then we can start planting. So I'm thinking of using this sand mix. It's like a sand and gravel mix that I've used before. I think this will match nicely with the rocks that we've used. So yeah, let's uh, give this a try. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think it looks really good. Love this sand and gravel mix. Really matches well with the rocks. Looks super natural. Of course, we're going to add in more water later. You can kind of see that the, the table is not really level, but yeah, we'll fix that later. So I'm going to add in more, le uh, more water later. First, I want to add in the plants. Okay, I've just finished preparing all the plants. Of course, as always, I've ordered way too much. Kind of went a little crazy again, but that's okay, if we have some leftover, we can always use that in different projects. Got a few more cool things coming up, so nothing will get wasted. If you're thinking of doing something like this yourself, you also don't really have to order this many plants. It's just, uh, it's just what I like to do, you know? So we'll start planting and then we'll just go over every single plant in a little bit more detail as I'm planting them. Now, if you are thinking of creating something like this, then this is the plant that you should absolutely 100% get. This plant should definitely be on your list. This is Pogostomon erectus. Some people also call it Pogestamon decanensis. And this plant has some, well, we'll get some really beautiful flowers. But that might, might take a while, but it's definitely worth the wait. We'll get some really beautiful purple, purple flowers. Okay, the next up, a plant that I've never used before. I think this is actually a terrarium plant as well. So yeah, that's why I've never used it before. I only stick to aquatic plants. 
but I thought this was it would, would be cool in here. This is a type of a chorus. I think it's a chorus pumulus, something like that. But yeah, I thought this plant kind of would work well in here. So let's give it that a go. In front of that, I'm going to plant some Lobelia cardinalis mini. At the moment, it's still quite green, but I think with this quite a strong light, this should turn a decent red color. So I think that would be nice for some contrast. I'm also going to plant some on this side. Then over here in front of the Pogestamon, I'm going to plant some Hygrophila araguaya. Now I could only find this plant as an in vitro pot, so at the moment it's very small. So it's going to take a little while before it shows its true color, its true form. But um, again, this plant is going to grow some really nice flowers as well. Also a little purple-bluish. Purple okay, I still have a little gap between the Pogestamon and the Lobelia over here. It's on this side. And here I'm going to plant some Hygrophila pinatifida. I really love how this plant looks underwater, but I think above water it's gonna look pretty cool as well. Yeah, I think that's all the plants for the immersed section. I actually have a few more types, but yeah, I simply don't really have enough space. I wasn't really sure what, how much space I would have, how much hardscape I was gonna use, but I think this is perfect. So now we can actually fill up the, the tank all the way to the top, add a little bit more water, then add some plants in the aquatic section as well. Over here, I got a really small crypt. This is the Crypt Lutea Hobbit. I think this will look really nice in this aquatic section. So maybe one in the corner here. And then maybe another one on this side. And then always try to use uneven numbers, so one smaller one somewhere here. I still have a little bit of empty space over there. And I think this plant, this is Marsalea, I think this will actually work there. It can kind of grow immersed as well, but there's no substrate there. So I'm just going to fill in a little bit of substrate and then add this Marsalea. Now something you really can't skip in a layer like this is a little bit of moss. So I got this really rare Bursa Vlandera moss. Had this for a while, but I think it will suit really well here because it has a very vibrant green color. Okay then, I think that's the planting done. Really happy with that. Just did a little small water change as well, so the water is nice and clear. I love how that looks. A little view from the top as well. I just imagine purple flowers coming from there. Everything is going to be a little bit taller and just more vibrantly colored. I'm just thinking if we should add some floating plants, for example in the Desk aquarium over there have some beautiful redwood floaters. I'm not sure if that's gonna work in here, but let's just give it a try. I have quite a lot in here, but there's also some duckweed in here, and I don't want any, any duckweed in there. But maybe we can kind of just pick it out and clean it off. Yeah, I think those retro floats were a nice addition. So I think we're done now. I'm really happy with the, with the end result. So the majority of the plants that we've used for the immersed section are of course aquatic plants. And yeah, aquarium plants can grow above water as well, but they do need a little bit more humidity. So I'm gonna be spraying them at least, at least once per day until they kind of transition to this new environment. Besides that, I think it should be a very low maintenance setup. It has now been roughly three weeks since I made this little mini pond and I'm really enjoying it. I wasn't sure if I should add any livestock to this setup, but I thought just for the video I can add a few shrimp. If they don't do well in here, I can always take them out. The plants have grown quite a bit already and I've completely stopped spraying them. All I've done in the past three weeks is a couple of water changes and on this small setup that only takes a few minutes. I think it's going to take a few more months for this little mini pond to really show its true potential and hopefully some flowers as well, but I couldn't wait that long and had to share this with you guys.
As always, if you enjoyed this video, then do me a favor and smash that like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. In today's video we're setting up a new Nano Aquascape for the shelf. I have a pretty cool idea for it that I think you guys will love, so without further ado, let's get started. So the plan is to make like a cave slash arch like structure with Dragonstone. I have quite a lot of this stuff lying around. Uh, but whenever you buy Dragonstone, it's always full of clay, so it's quite dirty. We need to wash this first. Okay, so the rocks are all washed. I have a bunch of like big ones and then a top full of like small bits and pieces. I've also moved the tank to the table just so it's a little bit easier to work with. And what we have here is a UNS 30C. So it's measuring 30 by 30 by 30 centimeters. Holds roughly 10 gallons or so. And then the light is a Twinstar 300E series. It's quite a powerful light. I'm thinking of running a little DOI CO2 system as well. So the first step is gonna to be to make our cave with the dragon stones. Now normally I would build my hardscape directly inside the aquarium, but this one is gonna be a little bit more challenging. It's probably also gonna be a lot of gluing involved. So I'm thinking of building the hardscape outside of the aquarium. So I've just cut out a little piece of cardboard that's sort of the same dimensions as the tank itself. So we can build the hardscape on top of this, have full access to it, and then once it's done, we can uh, move it to the tank. So I immediately noticed that we have a bit of an issue. These rocks are way too big for what I have in mind. But that's okay because dragon stones are quite easy to break. Just be careful because it does create a huge mess. Okay, let's try again. I'm really just figuring this out as I go, and I'm basically just stacking rocks on top of each other until I find something that looks good. To connect everything, I'm using my liquid super glue and cotton pad method. So I take tiny pieces of cotton pad and I wedge them in between the rocks that I want to connect. Then I sew the cotton pad with Ciano Accolade super glue, wait about 30 seconds, and then it's completely stuck together. This method is 100% safe as the super glue becomes rock solid and doesn't leach anything into the water column. Okay, making good progress. I'm basically working on two separate halves. I think that's the safest way to go about it. And right now I want to just do a quick test run, move them both inside the tank and kind of see if I'm going in the right direction. Well, that is not bad for the first try. We already have almost all, both ends connecting each other. So that's looking good. I'm thinking that we should now just move on with the hardscape inside the aquarium because if I'm taking it out again, then this, yeah, we're just never going to get it in the same position, you know? Now we can add in the substrate, then put the rocks back in, and then just start connecting them. Now for the substrate, I want to try out a new product called APT Start. So these should be like dormant beneficial bacteria as well as nutrients for the plants. I never used it before, so let's open this up, see how it works. Okay, so it's like a two-step process. So everything that's in that bag, you sprinkle on the bottom, then you fill up with water, and then you add in everything that's in here. So I guess those are the beneficial bacteria, and then this is like the food for the beneficial bacteria. Okay, substrate is in and both these structures are in as well. Now let's see if we can make them connect at the top. Oh, 
Okay, so I think this is like the main hardscape structure done. We have a nice round cave slash arch, whatever you want to call it. It's actually not touching each other. There's like a small little gap between both of the tips. Doesn't matter. I'm actually thinking of adding some moss later on on top of that arch, just to make them look more natural. Yeah, I think the next step is to just work on the, uh, the small details. Okay guys, hardscape is done, looking good, really really happy with that. So we can now move on to planting. So I have a pretty cool selection and of course as always plants are sponsored by Dental Plants. So I have four different types of in vitros and two different pots of plants. So we have the beautiful Crypt Flamingo, got the nice Pusifalandra Ceremu Brown, of course some Dwarf Hairgrass. And we have a Rotala Indica, so this is like a very short stem plant. And then we have two more types of Rotalas, we have the Laos, this one will stay nice and green. And then we also have the, uh, the Atra, this one will turn nice and red. Now to clean these in vitro, I always just like to grab a little bowl with some sort of like lukewarm water. Because all these plants are like sitting in like a gel. So then it's quite easy to take the gel off. Just kind of soak it in the lukewarm water, kind of massage it a little bit. And then it will just come right off, you know. The dwarf hairgrass is usually the most difficult because it's like really like grown in there and mixed with the gel. But yeah, if you just kind of like soak it in there for a little bit. And it's okay if there's like a little bit of gel left, like you don't have to get everything off it. But just get the majority out of there and then you should be fine. And for the potted plants, I would just like to remove this card. Then take my pin set and kind of wedge it in the rock wall. Kind of just push it out like that. Just so you don't really have to like pull it by the, the stems, you know. And then the rock wall always, is always like two parts. I like to like split it in half. I've opened it up. And just peel it away as much as possible. And then once you've done that, you can also like dip it in water. Take your tweezers again and kind of like clean the, clean the roots a little bit. Again, you don't have to take everything off, but just try to get the majority, you know. Okay, so plants are prepared, so we can now finish the layout. So I'll start with the dwarf hairgrass in the foreground, kind of framing the, the path, and then I'll make my way towards the background. Okay guys, that's planting done as well. Really, really happy with that. Can't wait to see how this is going to grow in. Uh, as a final step, I've added one more plant all the way in the back, uh, the normal hair grass. So the, the slightly taller one. I think if that grows in, it will give a really cool effect. It will also kind of help with that sense of depth in the layout. So yeah, we can now move the tank back to the shelf, fill up our water, and then just see how it's going to develop. You guys will of course see that at the end of the video, so don't go anywhere.
fast forward, it's now been 12 days since the tank was set up. It's not ready yet, but I kind of want to give you guys an update in between. Normally when I do a tutorial, I kind of finish the tank, fill up with water, and immediately after that there's like a jump cut to 3-4 weeks later when the tank is actually finished. This time I want to kind of do an update in between, just to kind of show you guys the things that are going well and the things that are not going so well. Yeah, so on day one I've added the hang on the back filter, I've added some CO2, and I've also added that blue satchel from the APT start. And now 12 days later, things are looking good. Um, I have done, I think maybe three water changes, like three 20% water changes. Besides that, not much. And so far plants are doing good. The stem plants on the back have definitely grown a lot. Uh, some plants are not doing so good though. You can see that the crypt flamingo, some of the leaves have started to melt, but that's okay. I'm sure it's gonna bounce back. Uh, what's not gonna bounce back though, is the uh, Rotala Indica. You can see there's some uh, some brown melted uh, yeah, parts. I've also already removed a lot of it. And some of the boost is also starting to melt. And this one over here and the one on the back is completely uh, completely melting as well. So we'll probably just replace those plants. But yeah, besides that, it's doing quite all right. I'm going to remove the plants that are melting and just replace them with something else. And I'm also thinking of trimming the rotala. I just kind of get them into that uh, the same shape as the arch basically. Okay, maintenance session completed. I've replaced the Rotala Indica with some Anubias. I've also trimmed the Rotala in the back and replanted some of the tops. So that's all done. So in the next clip, you guys are going to see this tank in another week or two weeks from now. Another two weeks have passed and the tank is looking pretty good. We finally have some inhabitants as well. I've added a small group of red cherry shrimp as well as six beautiful rice fish. I was keeping these rice fish in my balcony pond but summer here in the Netherlands has been one major disappointment with low temperatures and lots of rain. So I thought let's just bring these beautiful fish inside. I also noticed some baby rice fish in the pond so hopefully with the adults removed, they have a bigger chance of survival. All in all, this was a really fun little project and slightly different from my usual style. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and I'll see you next time.